Rebels Podcast. I am your host, Justin Horto, joined as always by the Triple OG, Widamu Mason and DJ <laughs> I can handle Tiger that. Town. I can handle that. You like Widamu? Widamu? Yeah. yeah. It's grass. I like though. it. Yeah, it's just, it just rolls off the tongue nicely, doesn't it? Change my name to Widamu Mason. And he's killing Widamu Marshall Mason. Widamu Greg, he's going good at the Yeah, time. he's going Fucking all right. Para were good on the weekend. They were. No yeah, good. we'll get to it more as uh, as always though like and subscribe 5k plus we're rolling now we're flowing everyone's loving the show the comments have been grouse the stories have been the mickey we told some old war stories OG last week people want more of that it's funny <laughs> it's how fucking crazy eh? it's funny we're talking about it on the way in about how some micro just hits because um, you know I put together a show we talk, you know obviously talk about you know what certain plans are um, or, or topics that are important in the game or all the footy stories, but that one just happened organically, and uh, yeah, everyone yeah, loved it. There's a, no plan behind any story, people. A, a, coup, a coup jumped in the comments too, which was funny. <laughs> and some of the play, all the ex Newcastle boys, yeah. catch the ball, surely. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're you guys. Oosie. Head on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was good stuff. Um, yeah, we love doing this show. Again, we're very grateful for our friends BSC, which we got here as well. And also our friends the tab, yes, which is important to announce this week because we got some big news. We're going to be heading up and filming our preview show at the Caxton yes. on Friday at lunchtime. So there will be a little meet and greet. So we'll be filming. There's a they've got they've got a little bit upstairs where we can you know shoot the content. Me and Mace will be there. DJ Tiger Town will be coming up later because uh, there's more details to go with DJ Tiger Town as well. But we'll do the show and we'll do a bit of a meet and greet with people. And plus, we'll go, we'll mix and mingle and get amongst it with the punters at the Caxton, yeah, it's on, great, the Caxton. on Friday. I purposely did it at lunchtime too, Mace, because, you know, everyone's half cut by 5.30, 6 as well. So, oh, no, we, yeah, that's perfect. We've yeah. got to, mate, because yeah. I want to I be just as cut as them yeah. if they come rolling in. They're yeah, going to yeah. get it back. So don't we come in. We need to be on their Don't level. come in. Don't come in hot because we're hot. But yeah, we're looking up. Uh, we're looking forward to getting up to the Caxton. That's mad. Magic round, Mace. Yeah, DJ Tiger Town, you haven't been up there before? No, no, I haven't. It's a great weekend. I love it up there. We're um, very thankful, very grateful to our friends at the Tab. Yeah, thank you, um, Tab. They're looking after thank us. You. We're going to be doing some content in and around Suncorp Stadium, the Caxton. Yeah. Um, we've Friday got the night, we've got, we've got, the, we've got the, the Dogs game first. We've dogs got the first game. one. Um, us you and the Raiders. Got us tickets, OG? Got the tickets, mate. Beauty. The boys have hooked you up. Yep. Um, and then we're straight into the Brisbane Manly one. Awesome. So we've got some good tickets, good suites, so it's um, now we looked after. All right, awesome. And so after the footy, we're going to watch both games. We've got the Broncos Manly game, which will be unreal. And then the man in the middle, DJ Tiger Town, we've sorted it at the Ivy Blue Rooftop Bar on Caxton Street, number two Caxton Street. Nice little terrace, mm. um, a beautiful little uh, location. DJ Tiger Town, we got you on the ones and twos. So you've got 15 minutes minimum. But you get half an hour max, so you got is that enough time to make you to do your work? Oh, it'll create something of a soundscape, probably. <laughs> it's it's not it's a little bit shorter. What are you gonna do if they spin. start booing you or if one person boos you? That'd be really hilarious. big bastard. That'd be back. Hu- that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but I know you'll do that to me anyway. No, I won't. I'll be telling everyone to cheer for you, mate. Okay. You're that's on my side. And we're in Queensland. We're fucking enemy territory. Yeah, that's right. We right. are behind they're enemy lines. At, they come at hey, they come at me up there. Mm, do they? Every angle. Still yeah, doesn't stop, off, man. It doesn't they go stop. Your yeah, it's do fucking, they? It's all love now. It's all love, mate. Back in the, in the back in the day, mate. This bloke's pouring out of pubs trying to fight me on game day. <laughs> Fuck, mate. Remember when I said, um, oh, I, I called him rednecks or some shit. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's taken out of context, but whatever. I'll own it. No, um, it wasn't. <laughs> it just wasn't said in that like when it's like you know when it's in you loud. said it like a knockabout yeah and like, so what, well, what are you expecting in yeah, game bit two bit of banter what are you saying what are you expecting in game two I'm like because we won game one so, well I don't know typical shit probably 65,000 crazy screaming rednecks just trying to boo you like, like that yeah facts fucking exactly what happens yeah. right so we, bit of fun we but go fun for, yeah we go for our walk in the morning and like um, they're on it like at fucking 11 o'clock in the Arvo. So yeah, it walked about 11. Mm. 11 yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the Arvo. Um, fucking going down the... Down the um, fuck, I forget where it was. Down down near the near the water or some shit. Yep. Like, so you got to go through the mall and everything and like that. And you go down a few stairs yeah. from uh, the hotel. Yeah, the I don't road. know what it is, but yeah. um, they were just pouring out of the hotel. You fucking went up rednecks. You, you fucking are. Look at you. Yeah. You, you know you why? You fit the description what I said, right? Because the newspapers were gospel back in yeah, those days. Yeah, back then, 2006, 2007. Yeah. Fucking back page, courier mail, and they left it for game day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, smart motherfuckers. 
Um, yeah, so I was like enemy, fucking public enemy number one. Got booed for the whole the whole entire game because they pumped us as well. It was fucked up. You would have <laughs> loved, you would have loved that, but wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a respect thing. Now, now that now, now they say it's just a respect because we respect you as a player. And I'm like, yeah, it was a bit of fucking vitriol behind yeah, those things. So they pumped they pumped us right, and um, so I'm walking off. And it's like awful we're losing at Suncorp. Right? Every time I got the ball, boo. And it was the whole fucking game. The whole game was consistent. And then I was walking off and this bloke goes, hey, Mason, you fucking wanker. And it fr- throws something from the deep. Yeah. You know, you're going off, you know, you're pretty yeah, protected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it lands on my fucking head, right? Proper, like this, like boom. And it just like trickled down like that. <laughs> Shout out I'm body like, science. And I'm like, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, body science. Um, and it was Bundy rum. I hate rum. It was oh. the only thing I was like, and it was Bundy rum. So we just get the shit kicked out of us. Sore as fuck, miserable as hell. And then the Bundy rum on the fucking, on the head. Mm. I said, good shot, by the way. But yeah. fucking awful. Walked in there, just rum all over me. I was like, oh, you pricks, get me the fuck out of here. So yeah, <laughs> it'd be good. It'd be a good time. But now they love you. And this yeah. is, what I reckon, because I control the account too. Me and Lukey um, control the, the levels. I reckon there are... Uh, just as many weekly or whatever where they might might have been like fuck I didn't like Mace as a player yeah. but I love him on content <laughs> uh, love him now and they're probably Queensland fans or hated yeah, the dogs New Zealand the fans day. just one of, Kiwis, one of the other a lot of Kiwis bro yeah. reach out and they're like fuck I used to hate Mace but now I love him <laughs> yeah. with, uh, with his content because as I said like back in the day, back in the day yeah. it was the, it was, it was the, it was the narrative was yeah. um, on on the, um, Channel Nine or the papers. You didn't have any other like platforms to do anything. You didn't have Twitter. You didn't have Instagram. You didn't have any. So no one heard you talk unless you're doing an interview, which is all like prim and proper. Yeah, mm. and they, they take cut it, it out up. of context. And they or the cut paper. It up. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you get you could talk for ten minutes, right? And they're cutting thirty seconds up out of it. So everything is taken out of context most of the time. You know what I mean? But it's so so people just perception is reality. So what that was of me is just like either fucking love or hate. That's it. Mm. Black and white. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit different now because people get to see a different side of probably the real me that's always been like this anyway. Yeah. And they're like, oh, fuck. Oh, oh. And I'm just like, fuck, mate. I'm not, OG I'm not, even, act, I'm not even acting surprised. I'm yeah. like, just fucking, that's don't, still, you shouldn't judge people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just more fucking mm, slant on yeah. them. I'm like, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's your fault for fucking, for making up your, um, your mind on fucking papers and shit. All right, well, we're looking forward to that. Magic Round, it's a fucking great weekend. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it. If you're not ready there, get up there. You you get an opportunity to watch uh, multiple teams across the weekend. We're going to be getting in there, like I said, on the Friday night. And then we've got some... uh, we got a golf day on the Saturday with the Alfred's apartment boys. Mason you missed out on the one a couple yeah, of weeks ago. I follow them on Instagram now. Those, I didn't know who they were. I'm like, fucking, I'm glad I missed out. Yeah, the those lunatics. boys did well. Yeah, it was a, it was a it was a rough Friday night for yes. us. Yes, I was feeling be a tough. Carry on Saturday, yeah, maybe for yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> so looking forward to that. They they do a great job. Tab's going to be sponsoring a hole as well. So uh, again, grateful for the tab. Uh, what else? Couple of we'll catch some up stuff with the North Queensland Cowboys. We're gonna do we're gonna do some content with the Cowboys. We're we gonna try and get as well. Um, we'll Ch- yeah, maybe? no, Chatty's out now. He did his calf, but he's organised uh, the dog Ruben Cotter. Yes, Ruben Cotter. Dog. Uh, Scotty Drinkwater, I think, is gonna do some stuff with us. So okay. that'll be fun. Um, it's good always getting around the boys, and then we'll probably catch up with a couple OGs. Mm. Big big everyone's, Willy Tong. Big Willy everyone's T. floating around. Everyone, that's da- it's a dangerous little yeah. weekend. Yeah, like last last year, I because really, they're doing Magic Round. How long have they been doing it now? Two, three, it's three like, years. I feel like I love, you know what I love about, but they yeah. had the year off. Yeah, I love about the NRL. Come. They act like they act like they've just like grabbed this mad like this is their concept. Mm. This is took it from Super League. How good, we played, how good we, Super played League in, we played in the fucking Magic Round at yeah. Newcastle in 2016, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. This, that's the same concept. And they don't give the Super League any love. Mm. I'm giving the Super League love now. Yeah. It's fucking all Super League. Yeah. We're just taking the same concept, not giving you any love. So this is all the Super League guys. I'm like, Magic Rounds? They've been doing this fucking shit for fucking 20 years over there. Super League Magic Round, NRL Magic Round. Gather round AFL. So yeah, there's, exactly. There's, there's levels to give, it now. Give the Super League shout out. To, shout out to Super League. Fuck, that was so much that was fun. crazy. Because <laughs> like In the difference, the difference is. So not only do people not even recognise you in your own town over there, North of England, like it's a working class mm. game. Newcastle, no one knows who you crazy are. Crazy little town. So in the turn. Oh, fuck. Yeah. It's Newcastle's best. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah. But that's, like, yeah, that's my Premier League. But even last Newcastle. year, even oh, last, is it? But yeah. last year, like, it was cr- it was a great like three or four days I had up there. Mm. Um, just the vibe and everything. It's, so, it's, it's I don't know what I don't know what it is. Like, everyone's just turning up from everywhere. I'm not yeah. sure if they're mainly all new uh, Queensland fans. But it's a good mixture, I think. It it's is a good fifty. People are coming split. up. People are like, oh, you going to Major Round? You going to Major Round? So that's a good vibe, man. It's good. They've done a good job. Yeah. Even though you, I, I find like, again. I, 
feel like there are a lot of Kiwis that travel for it as well. Especially, you know, because... Good little, little weekend away. Yeah, the, and, know, the, and, there's, and there's a ground. lot of Kiwis in, in Goldie and Brizzy as there is anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good representation uh, across the board. And, and everyone's just pumped because everyone gets to watch so much footy. You, there's an opportunity where you might get to see some of your favourite yeah, players. Yeah, and it's different because, you know, you might see some players walking around the streets. Like, yeah. walk Because like, some players are staying in the, um, right near Brisbane Mall. So you don't know who you're going to run into in any cafe. So it's, a, it's pretty good, man. I like it. All right. My biggest takeaway from round nine, Mace, I'm just going to hit you with this straight away. So we've been talking a lot about our tears. Me and you, I feel like we're on the same page, but I've gone and put them out. I've got seven tears. Yeah. All right? So normally, My takeaway is his takeaway. Yeah. Because this is solid. Yeah. So I will, this is organic for you because I yeah. want to go through my tears. I want you to let me know um, if they're right, if there's anyone you, that you would have yeah. in or, or, or whatever. So let's talk them out. So tier one for me. These three teams, I think, are deserved favourites and I think they're the best chance to win the competition. Panthers, Broncos, and Rabbitohs, even though two of them lost on the weekend. Mm. I'm talking about, we've got now, uh, about to hit 10 rounds. 10 rounds. We're nine rounds through, we're about to hit round 10. I've got enough data and I've sent enough in the squads to say that Panthers, Broncos, and Rabbitohs, for me... Deserve to be favourites in the competition. Yeah. Would you I have? Agree. I agree. I agree. Do you I like that anyone... three? Did you think anyone else? So the next tier, Roosters, Sharks. Well, if and you're Storm. going from tier of tiers of three, you know what I mean. Like you're not fitting. You got seven tiers, right? I got seven tiers because I got two teams that are just in a tier by themselves. So let me go through them and then I'll talk. Yeah, then, yeah. And if there are any changes, I wouldn't change two, that one. But tier two, Roosters, Sharks, and Storm. I think they're capable of making the grand final, and I think they're capable of beating those teams above in big games. If everything flows in right in prelims, even get to a grand final. But you know, if you if you if I got to choose between three, I'm taking Panthers, Broncos, and Rabbitohs. But it wouldn't surprise me if Roosters, Sharks, and Storm knock off a few of those teams yeah. in a prelim or a final, or potentially get to the grand final and lose. Yep. Next tier, and this is a bit of a projection, and they're starting to get troops back. I got the Eels by themselves in tier three, so they're a team. I feel like they can go on a run. They've had yeah. an awful start to the season. They're still at the cattle. They played in a grand final last year. I was a bit down them. I really like the performance, obviously, against the Knights. But I'm just – they're a team that, you know, when you look at them on paper and you go back and you're like, fuck, they do have talent across the board. Really good halves, strong forward pack, um, Gutho, like good outside backs, Mike Estevo, good finishes. Like it's there. Yeah, there, there are some question marks in the team. But they're the next tier below for me. Yep. Tier four, I've got the Warriors and Dolphins. And this is this is a this is a tier where they might not necessarily oh I definitely oh, not definitely. They're not gonna win the comp, in my opinion. No. But they're gonna be Definitely not. They're gonna be ultra consistent all year and they're gonna be a fucking a tough out. Yeah. And so, so what I mean by that is I wouldn't be surprised if one of these two teams make the eight around the six or seven, but not genuine contenders, mm. and they're going to be a pain in the ass all year. And they could potentially knock out a team that you think's better than them in the finals, if that makes sense. Next, yeah, if they get down, the eight spot, if they play that one or, or the or the or the two, they might they might seven beat or you. six. They so might get you. They play seven if you're or six. Off, now, yeah, so they it's might five get versus they, eight, seven or six, seven versus six. And I can see one of them just being, you know, yeah, Wayne, yeah, Wayne yeah, gets sorry, to the finals I mean. and and he's and he's seventh or eighth, and they play fifth. No, it, that's what, that's what I meant. The bottom half of the yeah, eight, yeah. they could they could easily be because that's yeah. pretty even there. The bottom half of the yeah. eight, top four is always yeah, they're they're always pretty good the whole year, pretty consistent. Yeah, I think it's going to be Penrith Broncos, Rooster South. Yeah, tier five. Manly, Cowboys, and Titans. These these, these teams are Cowboys. talented. Yeah, they've got talent, but they're ultra inconsistent, and they're going to be a fucking pain in the ass for the fans. They're capable of going and beating the team like the Panthers, Broncos, and Rabbitohs, you know, by a decent margin on their best day. But they're also capable of losing to the Tigers, you know, like yeah. that sort of team. And that you know, I think Manly showed that Cowboys have been, you know, that they've re they've really taken a step back this year. Um, in the next tier is six is the drag Bulldogs, your Bulldogs, Mace, Dragons, Knights, and Raiders. Mm. They're a couple of pieces away. They're still they're still just a little bit away where they just need to get a few more pieces, um, keep building this year. Uh, and then there's, you know, like I sort of see with the Dragons, maybe if it's even a change at the head coach. Yeah. Um, and then with, just a couple with the of pieces Knights, away from a definitely top. Yes, eight team. yes, yeah, yes. Well, yeah. they might scrape those. I wouldn't be they, surprised if one of them, you know, comes out of the pack and goes on yeah. a run. 
but I still think they're a piece or two away from being getting to where the Warriors and Dolphins are yeah. right now. And I reckon they seven, could skip that that tier and go straight to that other one. Well, I see to the like, Parramatta when one. I look at the Bulldogs, Dragons, Knights, and Raiders, I've got I've got more faith in them being consist, more consistent than Manly Cowboys and Titans above. Yeah, them, which is I don't know. That's just how I feel about that. And tier seven, we've got the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you get uncomfortable when they you had the tier six and it was just it was one team off. <laughs> that was just for you. The whole setup. That was I just set you up. That, that's that, that was that was that was about. No, I'm only kidding. That's how I generally feel. DJ Tiger Town, would you change that at all? Who did we beat on the weekend, mate? Don't go off that, mate. Come on, I'm, use your football I'm smarts. Kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. Um I don't believe that we should be in a tier completely by ourselves. Well, who should be with you? No one deserves to be with you. Oh, well, Penrith after last weekend. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Come on, mate. No, I'm kidding. St- stick us in tier six. Um, I-, I-, I think that, mate, our forward pack, again, I'll-, I'll carry on about it all the time. I think our forward pack is elite. Um, it's just our halves and our outside backs that are inconsistent. Um, so for that reason... God, you could make an argument for T6 or T5 personally. but not I mean, five. It, Please stop, mate. Hey, we had... Give it another month and we'll go through the tiers right. again yeah. because right. like they've, they've got on one win and it's like, well, let's just see. let's see what happens because if they keep... like Because that game, if that was in a... It was in fucking sh- terrible weather. But I know they both had to play in it, but it was just the fucking lowest game I've seen for a while. Mm. Just some shit. Imagine playing out in fucking Bathurst, freezing cold, windy... Playing against the Tigers or Tigers playing against Penrith, you know, it's fucking hard. It was a hard game. It was just hard fought. I reckon it was played on a Saturday night at Penrith. Penrith wipe them. Mm. It was just one of those games, and it's a, it's a. And they should, ta- they the should take out. That's what I'm gonna. Yep. They should give. They should take a lot out of that game because they've both got to play mm. and get up for this game. Yeah, like Pen- you know what I mean? Yep. Like they 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 fucking. They got out there and they did the business, so they they might go on a bit of a run. It'd be interesting. Like who do you play this week? Uh, St George. Fucking very interesting. St. George will be pissed off. They copped the loss yesterday. Yep. Mm. Yep. We'll Boys get to that. We'll get to them. Yeah, we'll like, get to that as know, we go. Be, and that's a, that's one of the games where they, it's a bit of a rivalry game, that one. So it be interesting. Mm. But that those tiers are good. I think I think the you yeah, probably no, could have shortened I, I the tiers up. Like Parramatta, I reckon Parramatta deserves to be in that, the one below them. Because mm. I reckon Parramatta's good, but I don't think they're that much better than, I think Manly. Yeah. I think Manly's pretty good as well. If yeah. Turbo's Manly fit. Manly Yeah, that's what I'm that, saying. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like yeah, you, I, you I know, but I know what you're them. saying oh, no. with, um, with Parra and they, they find form and they've got Gutho and that. But like, same as like if Manly click, like you can see it, the potential there. But who's who else is in that tier with the tier five or six? Um, the all. five is Manly Cowboys and Titans that are going to be uh, so what I'm saying is they're ultra talented yeah I, I understand why you're going to buy yourself too because I can those, those other three I'm like I'm not sure if they can beat Para on their mm, day yeah mainly only Manly because of Turbo but yeah. if Turbo's not there they're done yep and the Titans they're just you know they're, they're good but yep. they're just there's something missing there yeah I'm not sure what it is yeah but um, yeah something, definitely something, something with all of them all right, uh, DJ Tiger Town. Before we get into our dogs, body son, dog of the week, let's talk about the high protein. You've been getting into it or what? You've been chucking it in your smoothies? Yeah, always. What 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 do you have in your smoothie? Did have you have you, you tried my smoothie? No, I'm not lying. But I just I I, I just go milk and protein. What do you milk and protein? Got? Straight yeah. up? Yeah, straight up. Well, not only do you have milk, I just have it with water. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right. Just do it with water. Do it with water. Yeah. Why? Well, if you're not going to. Milk's you, not that good for you. Yeah. And if you're going to have it in milk, maybe you just chuck the milk in like a bit of a protein a protein shake. So you, you chuck the high protein in there. Banana. You chuck in some bananas, mm. um, maybe some oats. Blueberries. Frozen blueberries. You know, a little bit of honey if you want a little bit of sugar hit. If mm. not, if you don't need it, you only have the, you only have the honey then if you get it. Then chuck this in, the shred. Oh, yeah. Chuck and the then shred in. This we're going to get the shred. Because. Tiger Town's trying to get get in shape, guys. So the shred is for you. Yeah, that's what you need. Take it home tonight. Hydroxyburn shred is a neurothermogenic which can be used to support long lasting increased energy production. DJ Tiger Town, that's what you need if you're on the ones and twos. <laughs> support focus, clarity, have some chaos, and have some fucking shred. And cognitive function, again, just got to be, you know, you got to be alert when you're up there, you know. The crowd, is, are they feeling it? You know, you know, how you feeling? How are they feeling? Um, <laughs> it supports m- metabolism. Plus, it is rich in antioxidants. Currently available in Coles, Chemist Warehouse, online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. I love this shit. I've been taking it for years. Anytime, yeah. any, anytime, That's your favorite any of the one, place, hey? yeah. This, yeah. the chaos... 
or anything to do with shred that just fucking rips the body fat off yourself. If you want to get into it, just it's great for you because you do it for your brain and everything as well. It's fucking mm. these neurotropics, whatever they're called, are fucking gross. Gives I you a nice it. little kick, eh? Hey? Get you does, going too. Get you going. So if you are, if you want to get after chaos it and you're feeling a bit low, yeah. Bit of hydroxy. Oh, even before even before I film, I have that chaos because mm. I used to have that beta, beta alanine in it, and it used to fucking make your skin crawl. I mm. fucking hate that feeling. It's good when you're playing. Yeah, not when when you're just walking around. Yeah, not when you're walking no, around I'm, the streets. Yeah, I don't want to be feeling yeah. like I want to fucking run through fucking brick walls. <laughs> um, so they took the beta alanine out of the chaos, and I use it just for the cognitive stuff. It fucking sharpens me up massively. Mm. Wow. I love it. That's how we keep the content nice yeah, and fresh. It is. All right, so who's Mace? Do you want to get into it first? Kicks off your Body Science Ooh, the dog, Body Science Dog of the Week. I can't go past... And there was a few guys there out there. There was a heap, of dogs, was a heap of dogs on the weekend, but I can't go past Kieran Foran. I know yeah. other players, but oh, what did he do? I'm like, mate, he went down... What is he, 33? 32, 33? Yeah. X-team, yeah. brookie on a sad day. Yeah. Fucking... Um, I always knew he was going to turn comes up. Down. I knew, we knew he was, he was always going to turn up, right? Yeah. But we didn't know his, his whole body was nearly going to collapse on him. Did you see the interview after the yeah. game? And he could barely walk. Yeah, he's a tough little fucker, mate. And he's he got he was he was involved in about I reckon three or four of their tries. Yeah, with that last pass, you know what I mean. They had that left side humming, but his defense was unbelievable. He should have went off. He should have went off. Any other player would have fucking went off and had about three weeks to cry about it. He played the whole eighty, and and they did that injury at about two, 25 minutes. Yeah, in. I remember that's when it. what's the name went off. Alejandro mm. with a grade two yeah. hamstring. And yeah. you could tell Foz was about to come off because he was fucked his toe, his knee, everything. He, he couldn't and afford he to go And he stayed out there the whole time because that's how much it means to, to win at Brookie and how much pride he's got in himself. Mate, he deserves it. He's got fucking dog written all over him. I was there, I said, I don't care who fucking plays outstanding. And just, I said, I can't go past you it. You caught it straight away. Saturday night. I said, night. mate, he's a, he's a fucking Friday, dog, Saturday mate. night? Saturday night. Saturday, super yeah. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ches sent Olaquatu at him all night too. All day. All day, that's, all And that's night. another thing. I was like, defensively, it was more defensively. Like, yeah. they just kept going at him, going at him. He kept turning up. I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. Imagine if that could just, like, the inspiration that these younger kids would have just been looking at. He could have easily went off. He mm. couldn't walk. He couldn't walk when the whistle went. Like, his knee was yeah. that fucking jacked up. I was like, you tough little prick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's, and it's not, he's in a very vulnerable position at the three man. With that big motherfucker running at you all game. Mm. He's getting his legs tied up with he's just putting his body in front. I was just like, wow, these younger kids, man, you should look at that, take a leaf out of Kieran Foran's book. That's uh, fucking toughness 101. Hey, That's we caught dog. it straight away too. He's proper dog. Yeah. We caught it straight away too. Bringing out the best yeah. in David Feeder. Mate, David Dave, Feeder's he's, got, he's, 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 he's playing to his potential now because it's scary. If you've got that trust in a guy that's going to defend all the too like that, but also going to take a lick for you, yep. like he did the week before against Felice Kafusi, mm -hmm. before they, before you got to think back to it, before they, um, you know, lost, you know, lost that game and they went on that awful run hey, straight right. right at the start of the game, Felice Kafusi, boom, gets licked. Brimo goes through. I think he links up with Chris Randall. Um, he's and as I, tough and as I he think Fafita's actually looking at at Foz and what he's doing and putting his body through and going, I've got to protect him somehow, and I've got to go to that next level. You have to because Kieran's doing that shit. And he just he has that he he, he has that sort of aura about him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's Kieran Foran, he's a fucking one of the greats, and I think that's really bringing the best out in Fafita because I know when Fafita's on, it's when he when they kick down his side. And you get play two, and he's going around the fucking open. Mm. Give me the fucking ball. Yeah, that's scary. He was looking for and carries. He wants often, the ball he? when he's looking. He wasn't doing that last year. Mm. He'd be happy to sit on a short side when there's three people stacked in ten or fifteen meters. I'm like, he's not on. When you see the big boy get around there, fucking taking the licks on play three because everyone's trying to kill Feeder. He's mm. a fucking big dog, man. He's playing to his potential, and that is fucking frightening because that ceiling. And we talked about ceilings last week. I don't think it's fucking nearly touched. No. And that yes, is he's freaky. playing a lot better, but he's still got, for sure, he's still got more. The ceiling's in huge. He's fit. I mean, he's going to be scary in Origin. Yeah. Because, you know, a couple of years ago when he played Origin, I don't think he was probably ready. He mm. got dished up against yeah. up in He'll North Queensland. I was in, I was in Townsville watching. I said, a lot of pressure on this kid. He was 20 years old. And New South Wales, they're about that shit. They mm. love it. And they were on. Mm. And, um, you know, he just he'd come off the bench and we had all the momentum. So it's hard in Origin. You mm. start that kid in the left edge. That's it. Yeah. Felice on the right. Fucking good. It's a good back yeah, row with it's, Carrigan. It's, it's, That's yeah. a very well balanced back row. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, even like yeah, last you week. you forgot about. It. You thought he's on the bench and maybe no, I had him on the bench, um, but I had an eye on there, but I just can't put Jeremiah and I in there at the moment. No, no, no he's, he's not in. He's not playing. Well, I'm, I'm well easy. Enough. Like I was thinking, who's going to play left mm. because because Felice is already a right. lock on the right. Because yeah. they had Cape Well when years passed, but um, yeah, no, no, he's he's that's his spot. Yep. Yeah. All right, my body science Derg of the week. 
Tracker, my boy Tracker, Clinton Gutherson, just getting after it. Yeah. And it started all the way from running out of the tunnel, OG. So, Lukey, put some uh, micro on this, go back and watch Gutho sprint out of the tunnel. He well, was, was he Fanukin sprinting? It was Fanukin sprinting. <laughs> he Finucan, ran out. Was he Fanukin? Oi, Fanukin, he would have <laughs> been proud. He would have been watching that game going, that's how you sprint out of the fucking tunnel. <laughs> that's how you run out for he, a game. Mate, he, I'm, I'm big on that stuff too. You know what it's like. Yeah. Mate, you know, sometimes when you look at it, players are. Uh, you know, sometimes you can't get a read on anyone, you know, how they're feeling before a game, but actions show it. And, and like, mate, I watched him run out and I went, fuck, track is going to have a game. Sorry, how, how was your technique running out? Not technique, but what was your mindset? Um, I was always cruisy. I try to, because I always try to bring myself back in because I had mm. so much anxiety. I wanted to stay yeah. as relaxed as possible. But it was it was different. Like, when we when we uh, go back to the Parramatta days, everyone was real nervous in the sheds. Yeah. And then obviously you get to Manly. And then when I got to Manly, we had all the OG. So yeah. it was kicked back and relaxed in there. So. That's when I played my best, when I was relaxed. If I got too pumped up, like when I was lucky enough to play finals footy around that, you know, yeah, the GF yeah. and all that, you look over, you got Sonny, it's like trying to bring yourself back in. It's weird, eh? Some people, I used to think when I was back in when I was younger, like I used to love, just take the whole crowd in. You know what I mean? Like I never used to sprint out or anything like that. Yeah. Each, each to their own, just fucking do what you want. I don't yeah. really care. But like, I used to like really like listen, like soaking in the crowd and like not really getting overawed by it at all. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like just thinking that's it. And then once it kicked off, it sort of blank, I sort of like would blank out. Everything. Yeah, same. Yep. I'd come in and out of, of stuff like if it was, if, whether it be a semi final, origin, tests, and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't really, the moment wasn't really that big crowds and all that kind of stuff. And then I was playing in Newcastle. Well, I used to jog. I used to just like walk out because I was like worried I'd fucking tear a calf. Well, if, I come out of, if I come out of the blocks or something like you'd be like, I mean, Jeremy Smith is like fucking hell and Kurt Gidley. I was 32, 33, and 34. Some of the games, some of the young kids are sprinting. I'm like, Nah, man, I'm just take it easy. I'm good, man. I'll just yeah. I'll fucking walk out in a little bit of a jog and then get into it. Yeah. But it was fucking funny. I was like, when you're worrying about a calf, <laughs> when you worry about a calf or a fucking hamstring, Run just we had a pretty um, senior senior side there. Like, not senior, but like Gids has been around. You were, yeah, you had some like, you, know, you had fucking uh, like Jeremy Smith, the same yep. age sort of thing. So Bowie was, Scott um, was around. Bowie was Scott. Mm. Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, we're just like, fucking take don't come out of the blocks at all. <laughs> we'll tell you who did come out of the blocks, and that's Gutho. Yeah. Fucking Doug of the week, three meaties. But the most impressive part of me about about Gutho, and I think sometimes because he's like because he's a mate, you end up watching those players a little bit closely. Most yeah, 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 yeah. People you got relationships with. Yeah. I'd love to just see the the data that that all the NRL clubs get, the heat tracker, and how how oh, much yeah. he works um, he at, a, at a maximum too. Like he's all, he's sprint, it looks like he's redlining all the time. Sprint efforts like. His, I remember I've said this a few times. If you watch my content before, Munster talked about. I said, "Why do you always struggle against Parramatta?" He goes, "Just Gutho is always positionally so good, and if he's not and he's out of position, he works his ass off to get there." So you think early in that game they had a nice little shift. Obviously started the the game well, and then uh, Newcastle hit back straight away. They had some ball, and then Greg Marzu they get they get a um, I think it was maybe KP lob one over top or Jackson Hastings. Mm. Get Greg Marzu one on one, fifteen meters out. Hardly anyone stops him. Yeah, he got him. But because Gutho got a, a real clean position, because it's too, it would have been too hard if Marzu had the angle and he was ready to run into that corner. There's no way Gutho could hit him as hard as he wants. Not going to do anything, to Marzu. He's going to score that try. But because he worked so hard, he got so square that Marzu tried to run over top mm. of him. But then there was enough time yeah, for troops yeah. to get involved and help him out. Because very hard to stop that That's far. Some things off the ball. Like with his talk and communication, what he does with the middles and his positional play, I think it's fucking top three. Yeah, in the game for me, like, it'd be him, do it, Dylan Edwards in that conversation yeah. for sure, and Teddy. And Teddy. Teddy, that would be my top three yeah. defensively in terms of like position wise uh, communication. You can see him screaming sometimes if you listen close enough. You can hear him. Nah, fuck from like through you, the referees, mic. You can see him. Mm. He's fucking screaming at blokes. He holds people accountable. He's a real leader in that team, man. I think he's the captain. Yeah. I know Moses runs out first. Doesn't Mo is Moses No, no, captain? Gutho's the captain. Sometimes you think Moses is the captain. I thought Moses was the captain. Well, because you always see him next to the ref. That's why. <laughs> he's always coming in challenging. So Gutho's the captain, right? You, you'll see Moses run over. I, I three swear times to a God. Game. Well, it's because Moses always comes over and goes, Gutho, challenge that, challenge that. So he pulls he pulls the trigger <laughs> on, the, on the challenges and then Gutho always run out of nowhere and go, what was, what was it? And then Moses goes, trust me. 
And I'll, I'll tell you what, I reckon Mitch Moses has got the best strike rate with captain challenges that he's I've playing seen. good, man. Mitch Moses, he's good. He's playing yeah, really he's well. He's on. He's on. So. Has he signed? Is he signed with? Well, I assume so. I mean, it's, it's just it's, gone it's, away, hasn't it? Yeah, they haven't noise? really proper announced. Really, it's just a formality, I think. Yeah. So maybe it's not signed on the dotted line, and there's still work to be done. But uh, you would think it'd be silly to let him go, man. Yeah, you good. would think he's going to stay. But tracker Clint Gutherson, body signs Derg of the week. Week nine. Well done. Now, uh, here's a little catch up we had with Nico Hines and Marley Silver. Uh, we've got the When We Grow Up podcast in with us, uh, Nick Hines, <laughs> otherwise known as Nicholas Hines, <laughs> Nico, and Nico Marley you, Silver and Nico. <laughs> Nico to you. Nico. <laughs> when he come in just before, just for a little story, uh, I called him Nick for some reason, but uh, he, he, he let me know straight away he What'd didn't like me? it. <laughs> <laughs> he let me know straight away he didn't like it, so I had to. I had I've to let you know a couple of times it. I haven't liked yeah. some things about what you said. About <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out for me last time. I um, I put, I think I put the lines reason, and then you went through. Three in a row, so NRL can you teams. Do it again? Can you do it for if you're week? watching? Yeah. If you're watching, you need me to put a line through you. <laughs> it's all good. But guys, yeah. So tell us a little bit about it. It's um, it's dropped today as well. Uh, the when we grow up pod, Marley. Um, let's get into the details. How did it all start? When did you come up with the idea? And a little bit about you know what the show's about. Yeah. So I guess uh, we've been talking about doing something together in a podcast format for what six months or so. Um, yeah, a bit longer than that, maybe. maybe. Probably a year. Oh, we wanted to do our own because we're very like mind, not minded people. And mm. I filled in on a podcast, Chicks and Balls. I don't know if you heard about yep. last year. She'd done it. Yeah, with yeah it. I jumped yeah. on Chicks and Balls. Yeah, yeah. And then um, <laughs> these guys listened to it and they thought we'd be pretty cool to do one together. And they felt felt like it fit. So yep. yeah. yeah. Then we started speaking about it properly. So it's probably been about eight to ten months. Yeah. We spoke about it like like it would be pretty cool to do one. Yeah, because I remember you come in um, and you talked about you get involved in the podcast and Marley, we've done some stuff before where you've yeah. come in as well. Um, what are the details around the potty? So when we grow up, it's sort of a little bit of a hint in the name, but um, yep. tell us how it all sort of, sort of works with the first couple of guests you've done. Yeah, so what we do is we've invited lots of guests in who not – some of them don't necessarily have a big profile or anything, but we just know they have a good story. Yep. And we get them to sit on the couch and reflect on what their younger selves would think of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've kind of surprised them uh, with pictures of their younger selves. Oh, and cool. that's such a special thing to watch. I think we knew that there would be some sort of an emotional... Let's talk to, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, conditioning going off in the background. Good. <laughs> that's just gonna like, going to keep going. Deal with it. Yeah, you just got you just got yeah. you just got to ride through it. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we, we knew that, like, you know, people might get a bit emotional thinking about what their inner child, what their younger self would think of what they've done or how they've overcome things and whatever. But I think I was, yeah, I've been quite taken aback by the visceral reaction people have to looking at that photo of their younger selves. And it's it's been amazing to have guests be so vulnerable and open with their struggles and with their triumphs, what lessons they've learned and what they want I guess other people to know so we've had um yeah we've got a couple of episodes banked but uh today we launched uh with an episode with just the two of us with him mostly taking the piss out of me yeah and the other that's one good little micro there that's what i want to keep that going as well because <laughs> yeah. you were saying just before before we rolled in the potty i don't know if we got it at the start but it's almost like it's nico's potty and just want to let, let everyone know that you're, yeah. the, you're the big gun? Oh, I knew this was going to happen, but <laughs> like he did the Instagram post to announce it yesterday and all the comments are like, congrats, bro. Like, <laughs> like, like, You've done all like, the work. Well you did all the work. Nico, well done. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you should see the scripts I write for this show. Mm. But well, I did the post. Yeah, and I wrote the caption. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paste. Was she was so ill as well. She rang me up. She's going, oh, they all congratulating you. Like, when are they going to talk about me? Like, yeah. like, come on. <laughs> It's not about My me. name's yeah. on top of the so when you grow up by Nico Hines and Marley Silver, not Marley Silver, Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, got yeah. the graphic designer to do it like yeah, that. Yeah, well so it's played. Like, I'm the alpha. It's my show. So how deep do you get with these um, people that come on? Like you just show, like you obviously just go through their childhood and everything like, that and they just get really emotional. Is that, or do yeah. you just try like little things? Or well, we'll go like three photos. So the first one will be probably like I don't know from five, five years old, a little bit around yeah. that area, mm. and then probably about twelve to fifteen, and then probably like eighteen, nineteen, and how often do like do you ever look at your younger self and sit there and reflect on what you've yeah. done and who you are, were then to who you are now? So that's what we thought we'd do, and they do get like because no one ever really looks at a photo and thinks about their past and reflect. And, no, mm, not in this sort of not in this in, sort of way. And then they just get they just get filled with emotions. It's like really cool because then they tell their story. Like they'll tell us 
who they were as a kid at that age, what they wanted to be and yeah. what their dreams were sort of thing and then show them the, the last photo of where they are really now and, and what their younger self would be thinking of them right now. Would they be proud? Would they yeah. be nice and that sort of and stuff? And do you really so, interrogate them like that? Like, would yeah. you be proud? I mean, imagine yeah. if we've all fucked up here yeah. and there. Yeah. It's just yeah, like, 100%. Yeah. maybe not, maybe. Yeah. You know, like you're right, probably yeah. sitting there going, well, because only only you would know, right? Yeah. I don't know. Everyone's I don't know, know your story. history. I don't know your history. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know mine. It's like yeah. you don't really open up that much, yeah. and you, you got to be vulnerable. I suppose it's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that's what we want to do. Like we're both pretty authentic people and mm. heart led, and uh, we want to create a space where they can come on and, and speak about you know their their struggles or and and how they got to being successful and. Yeah, we've had a few tears and like I've very nearly choked up a bit. Marley's a cry, she's a little baby. I think you just say with your history and you coming out and being really open and vulnerable, I think they would go in there being really receptive to that sort of thing and going, yep. well, Nico's done it on national TV. He's yeah. opened up and told everyone about your issues and stuff like that. So I commend you on that. So I think they'd yeah. probably come in here like if it's a safe space, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, sure. I think And then you're going to get true. these guys yeah. going, all right, well, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I'm, sure. I can, I can say what. And you not get judged and all that kind of stuff. That's yeah. pretty important. Yeah, it is. And it's important for the next generation of people coming through, whether they want to be an NRL player, or they want to be a CEO of a company mm. or a surfer, you know, like all these kids who can look at their heroes and see vulnerable sides of people. Like They're human. They're human. Everyone, yeah. Athletes are human. Everyone's human first before um, they are successful. And yeah, I just think it's really important for the next generation to, to inspire them and they can look at it and go, you know what, maybe I'm... I can get through this or I'm not doing it so tough and, and whatever they, they look at That's it. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. What about when we were, when we grow up, what about you guys? Where did the relationship start? How, how long have you two known each other for? Uh, a couple of years now. Yeah, okay. years. Uh, we tell that story in the first step of the Okay, podcast. do you want to save it? Well, you want to save it for the potty? allude to it though, but yeah. we met through a mutual friend, Georgia Moore, who you've met as yep. well, who used to do chicks and balls with me. Um, yeah, it was sort of one of those like kind of, per chance things because mm. my sister met Georgia in a weird way and then we all went down to Melbourne and then he rocked up to her house. She used to live with Harry Grant and Cooper Johns yep. and we're all kind of just sitting there and um, I didn't <laughs> think we were going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> First impressions, I was like, mm. yeah. um, no, because I'm used to that and like, I find it quite fun. Like I love, we argue a lot. We, we have a lot. lot of fun with it. Yep. But Nico took a beat and literally this is like within 10 minutes of meeting him <laughs> and he goes, Marley, I bet you're a virgin until you're 20. <laughs> oh. That's so what you he did, said. Yeah, so he you, just went into me straight away. Yeah, you come in hot, bro. Yeah. I don't know why, because that's not really me usually. Well, yeah. I, I, I remember I remember sense. under 20s, Nico. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a little bit different when you're under the 20s. And, well, um, I wasn't far off 20. Shut up. <laughs> you're a dickhead. <laughs> you're a dickhead. That was one of the other comments on the post that you did yesterday. There's the last photo in the carousel of uh, announcing the podcast is him with his fingers up at me. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. someone commented, that's probably the meanest thing Nico's ever done. <laughs> well, that's one of my questions. Perception so is I, reality, I, eh? I, I, I want, <laughs> that was one of my questions and I was going to save it for last. Has Nico taken over Jakey Turbos as the nicest player in the NRL? Because uh, there's not a person... No that one's got him. No one... J Jakey's an all-star Jakey's yeah. the OG But I feel like Nico's getting close But it doesn't feel like You agree Marley Look I mean obviously I, I think he's great <laughs> and, and he's very nice But you have to be able To cop Just you know Getting roasted If you're friends with Nico that, yep. And it's all in good fun no, like, good. As long as there's no Malice in that behind No, no intense in You know no. some people Say shit and I'm like You actually fucking mean that yeah. <laughs> A bit in that you, Yeah it's a bit in that yeah, You, you better that. pump your brakes <laughs> mate <laughs> Bit of spice Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like genuinely Like I've had people Say this to me all the time Like um, now that they like a lot of people Obviously know that we're friends Oh he just seems like The nicest person Blah 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 And it pains me to be like yeah. he really yeah. is yeah. <laughs> he actually yeah. is you know what actually is it's actually exactly what you see he's, he's so generous and I can't look at him when I'm being nice yeah but, um, <laughs> it's part of the reason that I think like I was so excited that we were going to do something like this again like we speak so much about a lot of the values that we have in common and yeah. um, this desire to just put something positive into the world so it's pretty good for sure and there's mad chemistry so I'm sure you'll kill it um Speaking of you know you know doing the right things and just being um, a good guy, Nico, uh, your performance against the Sharks, obviously, and then having Paul Green's family there, giving him the medal, and then you talked a lot about mental health round. So I'm sure a lot of that will come into the potty that you're talking about. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I know you you reached out to we indirectly reached out to PVL uh, on uh, channel, was it Channel Nine in the interview after about getting a mental health round oh, yeah. potentially going. Yeah, um, um, it'd be something that you'd lo like oh, to see, and I think sure. I think it'd get heaps of support. Yeah, I think so. Like, 
We do a lot of rounds. Um, you know, we do Indigenous round, which is awesome. We do Benny's for Brain Cancer round. We do Multicultural round, which is I love it all. I yep. just think like we could do a mental can health fit round. one in easily. Yeah, easily, like easily. we do all these other rounds for everything else, which is enormous. Like we have to keep doing things, but for our platform, players and the NRL's platform. To get more people speaking about mental health, like I just still don't think there's enough going on in in the world for mental health. Like I know there's all different charities and there's foundations and like are you okay days one day a year. Like we need are you okay day every day of the year. Comes in yep. ebbs and flows, doesn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Like right. With the, yeah. with the mental health, especially with athletes and stuff like, I just think that you're Superman. You're out there, exactly, exactly you're running right. to brick walls all day, and then yep. you just the TV's off, and then you're off. I understand. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shit that goes behind the scenes, and yep. that, and you only understand that if you're an athlete. So I think For you sure. should really push that, and PVL should really push it as well. Yeah, like, I try so. and get it out there because yeah. there's not enough. Like we talk about it in in just little increments it comes yep. up because of like someone's getting bagged racially or something like that. Mm. What about his mental health? Yeah. Then it just goes away. What about this? But it's only when something happens. So it needs to be something like that when yep. you put a whole week and emphasis on the mental health for athletes, for men, for all that kind of stuff. So I think we should really shoot for that. I agree. Like We should do that. Like you say, until something serious happens. Yeah, are they waiting like, for someone to neck yeah, themselves or something? Like yeah. the worst case scenario is that you just say a player my age who's played in the, in the game for so long, 15 years, bit of head noise, depression, this, this, this. You're waiting for someone to fucking jump. Yeah. Like, don't do it. You've got yeah. to be there now to catch. You know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah. you just have that. Have have, yeah, have yeah, have everything in place, but they don't really push it that much. Not as much as they should. And they speak about it for the two weeks after yeah. or a month after it. about it. And, and then, it then goes it's just away. kind of forgotten again until something, another serious thing happens. And no one really understands mental health until something serious is, it happens to your family or someone close to you or it happens to you. We don't want to get to that stage. We want to get no. knock it on the head straight away. So if we can have a round every year and speak about it for the whole year, then it's going to do wonders. And going back to the the Paul Green family, like that was enormous having mm. them there and all these friends. Like I didn't – when I got the, the medal, I didn't think about the medal before the game. I didn't really didn't even know it was happening until the week over they, were, they reminded of us it happening. And when I got the medal on my neck and looked around, I realised, fuck, this is so significant. This, that's probably one of the prouder medals I've got yeah. over my time. And seeing the family so like – happy like they were smiling about it all and everything they've been through they've been such a tough time and for me to be able to give that medal to jed and my jersey at emerson like they'll remember that for the rest of their lives and like i didn't want to disrespect the medal because i would have loved to keep it but no it was the perfect they're going to keep that it, forever yeah. they're going to look yeah. at it and go yeah. you know what nick Hines gave me this medal and that was the first ever one and something i can hold so close to me about my dad like my dad wore number seven and i got that jersey now and now i've got the medal like it would mean so much to that family and yeah it was just so cool like all our boys welcomed them in into the dressing rooms after the game they all went around and introduced themselves and like we i'm so proud of the club and how they'd done that whole day and night like it was just enormous and yeah i really really hope you need to really run like take that and just go for it i reckon yeah. just that momentum you know what i mean yeah. like yeah, especially with paul green and all that kind of stuff yep. and because he didn't it wasn't that much said about mental health and that around there do you nah, know what i mean like yeah. you've got to really drive this and just and keep going with it yep. you know what i mean get momentum behind it which it is mm-hmm. And hopefully, like PVL does the same thing. Yeah, I agree. Because like, those kids are going to be there, remember that forever. Like forever. Paul Green yeah, and, you know, like his ex Cronulla, North Queensland, all that kind yeah. of stuff. And I was pretty powerful. So, yeah, yeah hopefully they, they just do something about it. So it's just in everyone's face all the yeah, time. I agree. What would the process be like? Do you reach out to the Sharks? Have you had to chat to the Sharks about like following up on it? Um, and seeing what the. Oh, look, I've, to me, I had a pretty big weekend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a weekend off. So I went up at the Central Coast and oh, good. caught up with me, mate. Back, so up, had a few back years home. Back home. But yeah. um, <laughs> now we're talking about it again now. Like, yeah, I, I reckon I need to follow up with Dino, yeah. our CEO, and, and speak to Peter Volandis about it and Abdo if I have to. Like, I reckon now. You need I to sh- meet with I'd, him. Don't yeah, go through your yeah, management yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, Don't. Nah. Like, I'll get my people to ring. No, you fucking ring him. Yeah, and he'll sit down and have a coffee with you and you break it down like that. Yeah. Like, he's a man. Like, he'll be he'll be like that. I have done that. So you, yeah, too. you yeah. have to run it. Yeah, yeah. that's and a I, tip. Don't get other people to do going it. out. I promise you now. I'll, I'll awesome, do it and, and and I'll get it happening because it's, yeah, like you've been saying, mate, it's fucking mm. so important. It just needs to happen. Because that's that hit home for me when Paul Green. He's about I think seven years older than me, seven or eight yeah. years older. Really, you know, and he did that, and I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you know, all of us who played in that sort of era, like the head knocks and all this yeah. sort of shit, you worry about your health and dementia and yeah. You know, like Steve Mortimer's got dementia, God rest his soul. You yeah, know, like, yeah, I mean, I know. fuck, I didn't yeah. God rest his soul, like he's dead. You know, Steve yeah. Mortimer's got, like, dementia. Like, he was the CEO of my club yeah. 15, 16 years ago. Like, he nearly walked past me like he didn't know me. Yeah, so crazy, That fucking breaks your heart. Yeah, it and it's just like, Definitely. fuck, he was there when we won premierships and stuff like that. I was like, yeah. damn. Insane. So is that turvy? Like fuck, you know what I mean? Like just yeah. hits you home, like because you get, you get like you're young, you're right, you're young, you're young, you're twenties, you don't give a fuck. So like I'm 43 now, I'm just like, yeah. 
shit happens real quick, right. especially like you, some of your mates, like you're know, fucking getting the wrong phone calls and shit like that. I'm like, what the fuck happens when you get old? Everyone yeah, starts mate. dying. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like everyone, yeah. like, and I'm, imagine just say when we're like fifty or sixty, and like you're gonna have like you're gonna be burying some of your teammates if you don't if you don't take care of yourself now. Yep. Mm. That's what I don't want to do. I'm like, we're all gonna bury each other eventually anyway. But, but this is too soon, soon man. Soon now, Twenty yeah. years is too soon for me. Yeah. Yeah. We only fucking sixty three. Yeah. I want to get to like ninety or something. Yeah. Be like this too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be still like this. Sharp. <laughs> Skin <laughs> looking. <right> up. Collagen <laughs> <and> regenerate <laughs> oh, from BSC. Fuck. I sponsor the BSC. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's fucking some crazy shit that's been happening the last yeah. couple of years. I'm like, fucking hell. What do you do? It's just educate. Educate people. Educate. Educate. That's, all we, that's all we can do. you can't underestimate how powerful it is to have someone like Nico and your, you know, it's huge. Yep. huge. To be talking about it, especially for the, that next generation. Because I think the more that they're raised with it being really normal to reach out and, and say you're not doing okay and be able to see their idols doing that, the, the more we can breed it out. Because depression and suicide are so massive in this country. And for me, like the suicide rates in Aboriginal kids in particular, it's the biggest killer of kids, Aboriginal kids between the age of five and 17. Mm. I remember Connor Watson was Crazy, yeah. yeah, so it's too. Connor's mm. ca- yeah. charity that I still five sit on the 17. board of. That's, that's that's I've been doing stuff with Deadly Choices now and I like know all those stats and it's fucking frightening. Yeah. That is frightening. But ev- I mean, how many of us can say we haven't been touched by suicide? Mm. Not yeah, many. Sure. It's devastating. Well, you guys are doing great work. Um, kill it on, I'm sure you'll kill on the potty just like, Nico's killing it on the uh, on the footy field and, and Marley's get- killing it at the club passionate. Sorry, yeah. can, I, can, I say, can I ask something? Like with the podcast and playing and training, I know it's, it's fucking crazy how much you, how your schedule is. How do you, how are you scheduling this? How you've probably been apprehensive about doing it because probably because of the schedule. How do you fit it in? Is it comfortable? Is the coach comfortable? Fitzy comfortable? I'm pretty sure he would be. Oh, I haven't even spoken to him. You haven't spoken to him, but nah. it, it, obviously it's not going to affect your football. Nah, some nah. players are. Some players might be thinking, "Oh, I'm doing too much." Yeah, I know you guys. I know your schedule. Nah, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very <laughs> conscious of not doing too much. You do I've get a, some time off. Yeah, I've got a mindset coach who makes like well, I talk to him about that and make sure that I'm yeah keeping where the, my focus needs to be on football. Like, yes, if I'm not playing good footy. Like none of this shit happens. None of this shit happens. And I've told Marley from the start that like. She obviously d- does everything, so I will. I will admit for once that she. I said to her, "I don't want to be worrying about this." Yeah, you worry about your just, content. I, yeah, I just want to rock up and just talk and be heartfelt, you know. And I said, uh, as soon as this gets in the way, like I'll stop it there. And uh, there's going to be time, like in the next couple of weeks, where we're traveling to Brisbane. We've got mainly then we travel to Coffs Harbour, so I might not be able to do it. So we banked a few up. So yep. um, potentially an Origin camp. Potentially an Origin camp. I hope so. You should get so, it. Um, number one priority is always rugby league and my, yeah. my performances. So this yeah. that, this will never get in the way. But this is more of a passion project. Like, yeah, this fills my cup up. Like, I love having cool conversations with people like yeah. yourselves. Yeah. You know, and like, so you always got to make sure you're happy off the field. And if you've got a passion for something, and you got to fill your cup up as well. So yeah. there's a time of the, even an arvo for an hour, I can come in here and fill my cup up. Why not do it? Hundred um, percent. It's not taking too much of my time. So. That's what I'm saying. I know the schedule for the NRL yeah. play. I'm like, there's a lot of fucking downtime there. Yeah, there's a lot of downtime. You yeah. could fucking do ten podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a day off and recovery day. Uh, you're fucking still another yeah. ten hours in that day. And the message is right. <laughs> and you, and you, you, you like the podcast that you're doing is is great, guys. So, kill it this year on and off the field, Nico Marley on and off the mic. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, and yeah, uh, kill it. I will see you guys soon. Eh? Thanks, Thanks so well done, much. Appreciate having. A- uh, obviously, thanks to Marley and Nico for coming on. Good man, it's going to be a good show. It is. I'm looking forward to it. They they've got they've got good chemistry. Them too. That's on par with us. So, yeah, it's and good. Tiger Town is good. Yeah, the Tiger Town. They need a, they need a host in the middle. But uh, Marley does a great job. Nico's a legend. He's doing great things. And uh, what a good kid, him. man. Nico Hines. He's very impressive, isn't he? Yeah, he is smart. Well, like wise beyond his years. Yes, he's 26 years deep old, thinker. man. Very deep. He's a deep thinker. Very self aware. It's great. Yeah. All right, people who aren't normally self aware. Uh, the people in scapes depressors of round nine, <laughs> but Mace, yeah. I'm going to flip it on its head this week. All right, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to hit it from a different angle. So, obviously, we take the Mickey a little bit out of the coaches, and there were some ones that I want, was thinking about nominating this week. You know, obvious, obvious ones, um, and I might get to them in the breakdown of the games. But not not only do I look for a coach sometimes to. Uh, you know, say things with a little bit in it or sometimes I'm looking at coaches that are saying the right things and, and I think are showing great signs of where they are at their coaching career. And and, I, and this one's for Andrew Webster. So they had a, a tough loss against the Roosters. Mm. There were some, some tough calls that went against them. If you're a Warriors fan, you know, 
you see it all the time, whether it be on socials, whether it be on our page, whether it be on Bloke at a Bars. Mm. You always see Warriors fans complaining, and rightly so, right? They've been on the if you if, if you've watched Warriors games closely, man, there are a lot of occasions where they're on the wrong end <laughs> of some really tough decisions, really tough decisions, and. That goes part and parcel, mate. You know this better than anyone else. Yeah. When you're not winning games yeah. and you're, yeah, you're viewed either. as that team, then often I find like those teams don't get the rub of the green. Yeah. The beauty of this depressor this week is I've been watching Andrew Webster now for the last couple of weeks. He's had a couple of tough losses. He's not pointing the finger. And and, and I'll give Sirotto credit as well. I think both these guys have proper done their apprenticeship uh, under Ivan. And they've come out, they're at the perfect part of their coaching career where um, they're just saying all the right things. So Webster was basically saying, uh, you know, even though he didn't want to talk about any of the decisions, he didn't want to talk about plays that are missing, he took full accountability. We got to be better, better mm. in the moments. And um, not only do I watch coaches' depressors to find out if they're going to turn on their teams, I also watch them to see. Uh, what sort of leadership that they're going to show. And um, I think Andrew Webster's doing a great job. He's saying the right things. And uh, I know it's early. And you see this often yeah. early, Mace, because, you know, sometimes yeah. your coaches, you, first year, you handle it well the first game, year. Nine games in. Hey. Let's see, sixth year. Yeah. <laughs> sixth year. And you've dropped three in a row. And your fans are starting like to go. Blowtorch like Brad Arthur. Like yes. he's been under the blowtorch his whole career. Yeah. Mm. When are you going to fucking let him relax? Yeah. Never. So, but he's doing a great job for now. I think you know the Warriors fans will be happy with their coach. Yeah. Be happy with their team. They've had a couple of like close losses in the last couple of weeks against big dogs, Melbourne and the Roosters. But he still expects them to be great. And now, this uh, time last year, he's probably thinking, "Fuck, you know what I mean? Like we're not even thinking about those two. We're going to lose those two straight away." Instead of they were in the games, yep. both games, the Melbourne game and this game, they could have easily like they could have won it. Even though it was fourteen nil, they didn't obviously didn't score, but they could have scored if they pulled the trigger the right way. Yeah, you know what I mean. So this time last year, they're like, "Fucking hell, we, if we can just compete with these guys, we're in good stead." Look what they're doing. Yeah. They're doing a great job and he's doing a great job. So a little bit of a flip on the depressor. I think people come in here. No, I, right. I, I see people in the comments sometimes uh, for press conferences. It's 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 growing its own legs, that the little depressors. But you, <laughs> yeah, know, you, nearly, you, got know, me watch, you nearly got me watching depressors now. <laughs> sometimes you just got to uh, give credit where it's true. And for sure, Webster deserves the credit. Hmm. DJ Tigertown, let's get into the footy. All righty. Josh Schuster didn't play this week, but he's, he's certainly in the headlines. So he's had a scrap with Ryan Madison's brother, Dean, who I believe plays for Blacktown mm. um, over the weekend. So obviously um, they would be playing in the same reserve grade side. But, mate, a lot, um, lot of fanfare over Josh at the moment. What's going did on? Shoot, did Schuster play cup on the weekend? No, I don't, I, no. I don't believe he did. He's injured, wasn't he? No, but he, he had a scrap with... With Dean Madison, who I yep. assume was at Manly Training. So, mate, what's going on there? Just happens, mate, mate. Like, just scraps happen all was the time. Was it a training or was it... It's a training. A training. A fuck? Training, Why is it yeah. a big deal? Yeah, I don't know. It's just become a story. Because, yeah, because John Schuess is the, the flavour of the month, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they're trying to have a crack at him and trying to, like... Blacktown had a buy. Yeah, but they're trying to, like, pick holes in this kid. You know, let him... Like, he's... He's got some bad publicity coming out. Mm, I think... Mm. Um, Bozo's uh, daughter come out and said he needs to grow up, and oh, there's a few okay. little comments yeah. like that. They're sort of taking some jabs at him. Okay, some it rumors is. that they that he that he they don't want him and he wants out, all that sort of shit. I'm I'm not, I'm not believing anything until I hear out of his mouth or the coach's mouth. You know? Yeah. So they're trying to cause some dramas there for the young kid. Just needs to stay. He just needs to go back, get his body right. They should not have played him fucking two weeks ago. Mm. It was or last week. Fucking awful decision. They make some awful decisions. That fucking. Uh, High performance over there. Um, he shouldn't. He shouldn't ever played. He looked like he was. He couldn't move. Right. He just got through that game. Like yeah. I, I don't. I looked at him. And went, Why is he fucking playing? How did he pass a test? What did he do? Did he do that in the test? And you're like, yeah, you look right to play. Mm. It's fucking stupid. You throw him out to the the dogs. There, they're going to go at him. Like, I, fuck. I was looking at that. But all that shit. Now I'm just like, this is a fucking fight at training. Mm. Happens all the time, mate. It happens, Let's mate. Get you got young, Let's you get got to the young bulls going that, at each it, other. It doesn't matter who it is. I've had maybe three, like, hadn't led to full on proper punch ups, but. Yeah, they could have. Of, yeah, if the, people, have. the boys Couple didn't break it up. But if that's a game, you're just thinking to just say if it was a game, you fucking actually get in a fight with them. Yeah. But because you're a part of the team, no one's fighting. Mm. You know what I mean? But if that was a game, you'd, you'd 100% get into it. I know those two guys are close to because I know a little bit about who that Dean Madison is as well. I've seen him in, in content. I'm, Schuster and they muck around in that all the time. So, 
It's a bit of a non-issue. Yeah, I just don't but like how they've got him now, the media, and they're trying to fucking twist the, the narrative and try and control the narrative like he's a fucking little, like he's a cancer. I hate that shit. Well, this is man. This is a big problem that's always been around Manly. Whenever stuff like this, this this might happen every. every this is going to happen to teams like the Tigers, mm. Manly, when they, you know, things aren't going well. Like I know Manly are up there in the competition, but same as the no dogs. one, they, no one they, views Manly, good. no one views Manly as a proper genuine, genuine contender. I don't think, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop a couple in a row and people are going to people are coming after him. Man, this is the position, and, and Manly are the worst at keeping shit in house too. But uh, yeah, I just I just don't like how they're trying to do this to him. All right, uh, Hook. Anthony Griffin has been in the media a fair bit recently. So there was a lengthy piece that was written by Michael Shamus in the uh, Sun-Herald about Griffin's uh, time at Penrith and his treatment of his support staff, in in particular uh, Cam Serrato and obviously at the Dragons, it looks like he's on borrowed time as well. But, Scope, I, I, I think it's fair to say that he's, that he's done at the Dragons, but none of this does his reputation any good for, for future opportunities, whatever, they, whatever comes his way, is it? Mm. That's well, another club to be sh- when shit hits a fan, yeah, fucking dragons. everything gets out. Yeah, this is what's happening with the dragons with Hook. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he's it's well documented that they're not he's not wanted there. They've, yeah, next year the board and all they've, that sort of shit. Like they've what? already asked him to like, reply. Just fucking let let him you know let him go. Like, don't bring up shit from Pen- Penrith. You mm. don't know anything about that. That's what I'm saying. They always try and control the narrative and just like fucking just dig that knife in a little bit harder. Well, you know what? He's probably digging his heels in, right? So they yeah, exactly. They want of, him to go. They want him to they, go. They want him to leave, and then if you don't, if you don't leave, then they find a way. And it's not even no. look. This and it doesn't only happen to Hook. It happens to players as well. Where if they want to get rid of a player, they'll leak. This shit. is how the media. This is how the media and the clubs work. Yeah, clubs they coincide. Clubs up, clubs how they coincide. Media. You know what I mean? If you're if you're not if you don't fit how they're trying to do it, and you dig your heels in, they control the media, and they'll just. Let out whatever they want, how they, whatever, you know, whatever makes them look better, you know, mm-hmm. and it's fucking a dirty game, but it is what it is. But people are just like trying to educate some of the people who listen. Like, that's what's happening. Yeah. If you're a Dragons fan yeah. and you're a Manly fan, just take everything that you hear mm. with a grain of salt. So, what happens is if there's unrest, and obviously, you know, potentially it could be coming from fans too, right? Fans are the first to go, we don't like what's going on. What's the problem? What needs to be fixed? And they might, so whatever, so whatever potentially the majority could be with whether it's fans or people in-house they'll go all right not happy with hook let's find a way and then so potentially you don't have to pay them out and if it's like all right if manly think they've got a problem with schuster how can we twist this and and then turn it on its head you always just got to be careful Mm. who says what and then especially when when people start turning on each other, you got to, you, you end up start going. All right, you Man. pull back a little bit, don't you? No, no. I like just say with with Hook and the situation there, like he's he's not wanted. You know what I mean? Mm. Like he's just that's simple and plain. Probably from, from the players and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, they've been it's they've like, been open with it, and to, they're very open. The like dragons. it's not a secret. You know what I mean? But why do you have to bring up what I'm saying? What do you have to bring up the past from Penrith? Like, do you never want this guy to work again? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, why why are you bringing that shit up? Whatever's happening at St George, leave that be. That's yeah. fucking happening. Why bring this shit up from fucking five years ago? I don't think uh, Hook would be front runner to get. No, I know that. I mean, he's not he's, anyway. But, but I'm just saying he's help. not going to get. He's not going to get the Broncos job yeah. or anything like yeah. that. But like, he could potentially work overseas and shit. But if all yeah. this kind of shit's coming out, like he's a bad egg, like why are you doing that to him for? That's about it, anyway, right? Unless you're a guy that's won a shitload of comps, three and out's basically it. Yeah. Broncos, Penrith, Dragons. If you don't win anything in, in stints when you've had three different clubs, it's very hard to get a, a no. fourth regardless. So. And there's enough data on you as well and yeah. enough bullshit that yeah. they can fucking sink you. So, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, even in that case, like he's not that bad of a person. Well, you know I, I mean? Normie always, Normie's always said he's yeah. like Hook. Yeah, even when fucking he dropped... When, even when... Um, he's just when very he, old school, Normie, man. Yeah. He's old school. I saw that. I saw how fucking. I saw the St George boys yesterday. They're they're going out. Kit, you can tell these are Queenslander. So it's like Wayne Bennett's fucking dressed in RMs and fucking checkered shirts. Like, what is this fucking two thousand and two? Style this fucking team up. It's awful. Yeah, it's rednecks, eh? Hey? Oh mate, proper. It's making a comeback. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> All right, you want to review this round? Yeah, let's get into the round. All right, no worries. Uh, Cronulla down the Cowboys, forty-four to six. Uh, very very convincing uh, victory, but. Scope, I know that you've obviously spoken about your tears and whatnot. Yeah. Um, Sharks currently sit in tier two, but my God, that was a that that looked like a side that's ready to win a premiership. Yeah, they're not far off. They were hard not to leave out of tier one, and there'll probably be Sharkies fans that were watching that tier uh, two screaming out or screaming 
uh, at the podcast or if you listen to the audio. They were hard to leave out. I just need to see a couple more performances because on paper across the board too, yeah, they're, they're really. also a team. They're so talented. Very well but balanced. I th- I think, Balance is key. They've yep. got it. You know who I reckon is going to be really crucial for them? Who do you think, Mace? I think I wrote it in the group. Proper OG through the middle. Wade Graham. Yep. Yeah. So Wade Wado is uh, traditionally a left edge back row who's got great skill. He, he perfected that sort of Glenn Stewart sort of role on the left-hand side of the yeah. field for the Sharks over the years. But with Mick Ennis and Dale Finucane, they don't have that link, nice link middle shape that a lot of no. other teams have. In saying that, it's not required because Moylan and Nico obviously do such a great job of linking up side to side. Yeah, so instead of doing the, the two middles with the shape out the back, they love the block block shape. They cut it straight out. They love straight the block. to the point. They just have leads in front of them all the yep. time. So it's essentially the same shape, but they just hit out the back, hit out the back, and they nail it so well. But it could just be a nice little point of difference at the back end of the season. Because they do that so well, eventually when you see enough film, Mace, as you know, you start to go, all right, if a team figures it out by about round 17 or 18, 19, mm. and a team does well against it, the other teams goes, all right, there's the blueprint. This is how we yeah, stop it. Yeah. So therefore And they're nearly at the, that now. Because when we game planned for the Sharks, we didn't we didn't um we didn't do it properly. Yeah. But there was enough tape. You're starting to see there's it. enough tape to get when they get to their points and there's enough cues there to go, you can stop that. Yep. You know what I mean? So especially when they you know, because uh Nico has that right side. When they're on the right side of the post, Nico has that the sh- uh the right side, the short side, but he comes fucking sweeping around mm, next minute. Like- He's fucking bang, bang, and Mulatalo is in the corner. Yeah. And it happens quick. So there is enough on there. But you know what? They're probably saying, fucking stop it. Yeah. Because it's easier said than done. Yes. You still have to get all those troops involved. But I understand what you're saying with Wade Graham. If it does, he could be that connect guy. Because you you've got to be able to do that two ways. Yes. You know, because cause that Braley kid's throwing darts. He's throwing 20 meter darts straight to the uh, Moylan and stuff like that. He's a bit of an unsung hero. Yeah, he's good, man. Moylan's been playing good too. Yep. He has. He's lifted as well. He's since Nick Ace come back. He's really. But I think it, Nikora. I think went off injured. Yep. And Ueli. Yeah. That's a big fucking loss. They're, they're, those two have been their best in the last three weeks. So Ueli grade two with Nikola's the, hip, probably with the been, hip, hip drop. He's probably been their best all year. Yeah. Britain. Nick Nikora is yeah. fucking outstanding. Yeah. He's been the best back rower in the comp. Cowboys. Jeez, I'm, I'm off him. I'm officially off him. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Hey, we got to. Early. We had to round twelve to swap. Yeah. They're out of the eight. Right, they're not, they're so not the grand the final. I'm yeah. done. Predictions. Cowboys will put a line through. Right, I put grand. I've said grand final winners. Not even grand final. Sharks <laughs> still there. Yeah, they're done. The sharks. I mean, they're not the sharks, but like the Cowboys. Fuck. It's, it's weird to see the the disconnect the Cowboys have got I, at the I moment. I don't. I don't know what they it is. They have a few out at the moment. Don't yeah, they? Not, yeah, not massively. They got yeah. Tal Malolo out and yeah. um, Neem. Like yeah. the kids in the second year. That's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Towns is not having the year he's having that he was having last year. Mm. I mean, Dearden's still having a crack. Nanai's way off the pace. Yep. It's the World Cup boys, man. Yeah. No, they've been hit with that. Even Cotter's been a little bit like – he's been a little – like he missed some games as well, but he hasn't been tipped like – he was in everything. Look, he's still doing a shitload of work, but then off the back of it, because there's not the supporting cast around him, mm. he's not getting to reap the rewards of some of the, the tough stuff that he's doing, right? Yeah. It's it's a just really and drink looks, water's showing like glimpses, but then injuries. I mean, mm. suspensions and stuff like that at the start. They just I don't I'm not I'm not sure what it is because they had those players last year that had like career best years, mm. like Nanai breakout. You know, it's hard, it's it's very it's rare to have three or four players have breakout seasons and get Dally M's like the position positional plays. Yeah, they, know, they had six. three or four. Not win the position, but they had five or six breakout years. Yes, and it's hard to replicate. Yeah, that's what the great players do. They do that week in, week out. You don't see a fucking year like that, and then a year like that. Mm. It's you know you're somewhere here. So they're trying to figure that out. Hopefully they figure it. Out. I mean, I'm not off the top, um, the Cowboys completely, but I'm they're not a grand final team. No, they're or grand final bad. winners. They're they not bad. Might, yeah, they're definitely not. They might so, not even um, make the finals. Definitely, yeah, they'll struggle to make the eight. Mm. Only two wins. Two wins this year. Yeah. Parramatta 43, Newcastle 12. Now, I know, obviously, you've already spoken about Gutho, but Moses and Brown were both taken on the, taken on the line at will, um, which was which was great to see, but Dillbags' is, uh, opposite number didn't have a great night, did he? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a rough night for KP. Um, Dill was getting after it, and um, we said this a couple of weeks ago. It's taken a while now. He's been inserting himself into the game, Dill, but I always knew the re-emergence or, or the, the comeback of Sean Lane was going to be massive for, Bre- yeah, for Dillbags. They missed because 
Uh, what he does is he's able to, even if they don't create mad shape, he can play short, put uh, Laney into a hole. He gets a quick play of the ball. And if Laney doesn't offload or, or put him through a gap, then he can roll down the short side again. Mm. And uh, his, most, his most dangerous weapon in his bag, Dill Brown, is his run. Yeah, mm. and he showed he showed his intentions early. He mm. Scored that first try. Yep, and then I think Parramatta. He's he's there. I don't know. I'm not sure what, what it is. Like he's sort of like their spiritual sort of dude. Like he's not their he's not the gutho, like the yep. talker and that. He's, but he's like people. If they're going to go well. There, it's because of him. people love him. He's very respected, Brown. Yeah, yep. and they like when he whenever he's on, they're on. Every fucking game that he decides to turn it, yes, they, they all go with well. him. They yep. all go with him. So I'm like. When's it going to drop with the kid? Just be on every fucking game. Hmm. You know, we can't have you like having, like if you're a part of that squad, you're like, we can't have you having like a four out of 10. It's got to be seven minimum. Hmm. And then just throw us an eight or nine every now and again. I think the part, again, that, that sort of um, can be frustrating is it's putting himself into the game. But I think that's a big part because he's got such a, a strong personality in Moses there as well. Yeah. So you sometimes you see when he's not in there and Jake Arthur fills in for Moses in the last couple of years, Dillbag, Dillbag's normally fucking steps up, man. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they were ultra impressive again. Oh, their forwards, you know, junior, junior bowler. You know who was real, fucking man. outstanding? Jermaine Hopgood. Mm. Yeah, he was. Outstanding. Yeah, he's 74 a minutes in the middle, 18, 20 hit-ups, 172 metres. Yeah. 45 fucking tackles. He has to start he don't every stop, week. Bro. He has to start every week. So, um, I think a couple of weeks ago they started Maddo in the middle maybe and then had Bryce Cartwright on the right. Shout out to Bryce. He's 250 of the best. Yeah, uh, nice. He's a good mate of ours. So Yeah, Hopgood's um, a starter. And you're putting either Bryce at right right side. Bryce, Bryce or, in the 15. Bryce yeah, in the 15. Or, or, or Cartwright at the, on the bench, you know yep. what I mean? So it's like they've got a good balance now. I think Hodgson played all right on the weekend as well. Yep. But good Hopgood, back Hopgood back adds that little bit. Like he, he hits hard and he runs hard, but he can ball play as well. And he's got a nice offload, really nice late offload. Really good footwork and fine space. And create space. So he's one of those players you gotta you gotta look after. You gotta you gotta account for him because he'll fucking take you on. Yeah. He loves it. Anything on Newcastle? Um, I said this to Mace. So I I don't think we said it on the content, but um we spoke about it maybe on driving home the other week. I was like, it's a danger game for Newcastle. As much as like I looked at him on paper and I was like, sort of talk myself into it as we're going yeah. through the team list. But you gotta remember when you go through what they've gone through the last couple of weeks where everyone's been going, fuck yeah, the Knights are playing well, they're ripping in for each other, but they still don't get the chocolates. It's it becomes quite demoralizing and then you start, you know, even though they're getting the backs on the the pats on the back from people on the outside and, and fans are happy with the way they're ripping in against Penrith and and someone the week before, oh, yeah. someone the week before last. Um, who did they play last week? Cowboys, but they just fell short against the Cowboys. This is the th- these are the sort of games that you can you can have off the back of it, and mm. um, yeah, everyone was off the mark. Your KP was obviously because you can go o- either way, right? Like, oh, we've been close, we've been close, and then you nail it. Yeah, or we've been and close, we've been confidence. close. Fuck it. Yeah, a couple of things go wrong. Get off to an awful start with Parramatta, and then they get a couple of tries, and they go back to back to back. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh, it's not good, but yeah, Newcastle. I'm not sure if they've got the the right mix with K- something just quite with missing, KP though. like there. I'm not sure if I want him like getting the ball and ball playing. I Put want him KP ball running back fullback man. Put the other You've kid on the bench, the even though that even though that guy's been the young kid, um, Lockie Miller. You know, Lockie Miller's been like yeah. great meters and everything like. He still doesn't add much. He's very one dimensional. Mm. Yeah, he had he had a really good span for the first four weeks, mate, mm. for sure. Yeah, He's, he he shows a lot of energy, but. Um, at the end of the day, KP's not a six. Get him out of the front yeah. line. He does his best work when he's sweeping. And F- Gamble was, was probably one of their better players there for a couple yeah, of weeks when, he when was KP injured, was, it was all right. Well. Nah, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. All right. Brisbane, six, went down to South, uh, 32. So Suncorp's quickly becoming a happy hunting ground for South. Uh, they, they did the Dolphins up there a couple of weeks back. Um, <clears throat> and they've now snapped Brisbane and then they go up to Magic Round, obviously, this week as well. Uh, but I want to talk about Brisbane just quickly. Um, does this result sort of indicate... I mean, we knew it already, but it, it really, you know, sort of stood out how important Payne Haas is for this side and their premier, premiership credentials. Actually, another question. Would If Payne Haas played and Ezra Mann, do you reckon it would have been a totally different game? Is that I, how much influence he has? Yep. I, I believe so because I reckon there was there a little bit there in the beginning where it was like there was the, a game to be had there yeah, and then uh, it got away from him and then the floodgates opened up a little bit in the second half but it was close enough to we, it's 
he's almost the best player in the competition this year, Payne. Yeah. Stats wise and like Dally M wise and whatever just you're going by, like just, wise. Yeah, you just go by the eyeball yeah. test. He's like he influences games yep. a lot bigger than even some halves do in some games. And he's getting he's probably getting about twenty plus touches a game. But they're fucking destructive, man. Yeah, and he sets everything else As I said, up. said, like so he they... like he gets Carrigan going, he gets Flegler going. Yeah. Everyone everyone eats when he's on the field. Mm. When the big dog's on, everyone eats. You know, like he gets their sets going after like a great run from the wingers and Selwyn Cobble. I thought he was outstanding, but they just they didn't really know what to do with that one, two, three mm. punch, and they go wide. It just wasn't as fucking. It's very hard to replicate that. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, man. If you get used to fucking. And Ezra Mann, so Ezra Mann's a gun defender, and he's a fucking gun attacker. Yes. Don't get that twisted. Yeah. Whoever went in there, he might as well not even played that yeah. six. Jock Madden was way out of his league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way out of his league. He's uh DJ Tiger Town loves him though. Ah, fuck, because um, he's a tiger. He's, he's not he 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 an ex-tiger, Brisbane. so you fucking love him. Yeah, you love him. You talked him up big time. You yeah. said he's going to be the difference. Get off his nuts. Get, the, get it up, <laughs> Lukey. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they got they got after him a little bit, but Campbell Graham's a good nick, man. Cody's oh. floating around. That's becoming their strike edge now. Yeah. Campbell Graham. A, yeah, the right. But the thing is, like, how, like he was how that funny close is that, to eh? the dog of the week. Yeah, he, he was. was. There. I'm yeah. just like, because – and it wasn't just because of his three tries. It's how he scored him, yeah. but his defense – like Broncos went at him like that. They love that left side. Yeah, it's the most potent side in the game. Oh man, he he looked after that. That was that was that was an outstanding effort. Yeah, he's manly handling people. Mate, like he's does making, he get picked? Does he get picked for New South Wales? He's close, man. He's close. I'm, I'm with you, Nelly. Going fucking back. Get on the wing. Yeah, just put him in. Yeah. Like he's he's in that sort of form. It's like you got to pick these kids on form. I yeah. don't give a shit. Like yep. He's played for a show. It's well, enough. he's been in and around the squad now for a couple of years as well. Mm. Freddie's had him as 18th or 19th man a couple of times. So if Turbo, let's just say Turbo comes back in two weeks, plays subpar, or just say he gets through three games. Just say how many games will he have before Origins picked? Well, he could potentially play this week, Turbo. He was a late, late so, scratch in. I don't, yeah, I don't reckon he was a chance. So just say if he takes this week off again, so two weeks, so how many games to Origin? Uh, First of three. three. And he, it's and, he the end and he plays or three start games, of June, like, and he plays three games. He plays three games, and they're sort of like sub, I just can't sub pick him at the moment, mate. Saying, I've been I'm watching not... Manly closely. I just can't. You can't pick him. All right. What if he plays like seven out of ten? Still well, plays then, good. Yeah, seven out of yeah. ten. But he hasn't even played seven out of ten. Like as in like not that he's he's not capable of playing seven out of ten, or he, he's he hasn't been trying in a seven out of ten. Yeah, yeah. He just can't go. You can see he's like. He's trying he to, to go. He, he can't even go on like kick returns and scoots and stuff. So, um, I'd put the I'd, I'd play. You still put Campbell Graham in, or you said no, Crichton, Crichton last time? I was Crichton. Are you have you somehow it's twisting hard, that? Yeah. Because that this well, guy I was is already forced, on the fence. At, he's I was forcing our hand. Yeah, I'm just is. like I just want to pick kids that are fucking killing it and deserve it. He deserves it, not yep. just off that one game. Yeah, this just sort of solidified last it. Last eighteen months. If I was yeah, if it wasn't if you if you weren't sure. Fucking now you know. Do you know what I mean? Like now I'm that I'm that dude. I'm him. Do yep. you know what I mean? Like so I don't know. Yeah, he's I just like that. to reward those young kids who he's been battling for three or four years, mate. Yeah, this, yeah. Been, this, hasn't, this hasn't been like, you know, like a, a start of the year. Like he's just been playing good. He made the Australian, he made the World Cup team last yeah. year. The kid's a good fucking player. Yep. Um, I wonder if we do picking back. Because I'm saying, like, if Turbo goes, if Freddie goes, I'm gonna pick are you ready to go, Turbo? And he goes, Yes. He's playing. He's playing. He's I playing. agree with that. So Campbell Graham's not, you know, and do we push Campbell Graham to the to wing? Because he's Joseph going that good. Because Suali, he's been playing centre as well. Mm. That's yep. that's a that's a good problem to have. But it I'm is. like, that's he's probably played himself into that wing spot and the fucking and he's getting turbo and then and he's getting Freddie to ask Turbo, are you ready to go? Mm. That's the sort of form he's in. He's jumped Crichton and Suali for you. Yes. He has a I could well, tell. Yeah. There'll be fucking riots in Redfern if he's not in. <laughs> um, South are in a bit of trouble for having 14 men on the field for about 30 no, seconds. They'll find them. Who cares? Yeah, they the, won. The, the fine's fine. Like, that's fine. Like, like, how long they have? 30 seconds? 30 seconds is a long yeah. time. That's a fucking when, long time. What point of the game? Was it Tom Burgess? And uh, it, was some, it was him and Jai Arrow. Oh, was it? Yeah. I saw Jai Arrow down I in Maroubra the, the other uh, day. Yeah. Fuck, he's thick. Yeah, he's thick boy. Jeez. Thick boy. Mad mullet. Uh, 53rd minutes. Yeah, it's when they're doing in changes at the end, eh? Yep, so it Mate, was a that mix looked up. tiring, that game. Yeah. Holy shit, these guys are fucking so fit, man. It was like, that was just non-stop. Bang, 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 bang. Um, 
What do you think of the Broncos? What do you think? What, what what would you what would be the mindset right now if you're the Broncos? You sat in there, thirty two to six or whatever the last score was. Um, no pain, hearts, no as you ma'am, no coats, and you're like, if we get these guys in the semifinals or prelims, like mm. you wouldn't be t- you wouldn't be saying about this shit. Maybe when you're on the piss and you just be yeah. you're you're somewhere and you just you got the boys and like, right. like you're like how are we feel we get, right. we'll get these we'll get these guys yeah. in the yeah. prelim if it's yeah. a prelim all fucking cards in or everything yeah. in. How do you reckon we'll go? I reckon they'd be thinking, yeah. we'll fucking get them. They'll be sweet. They're, they're, it's almost we could get. We're not. We're not worried. You never. You we're never not worried. You never want to lose a game, but yeah, hundred percent not worried. And uh, you know, with those three back, those are three big ins. That'd yeah, be sweet if they're in. back. But that's not guaranteed either. No, 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 no. But um, just say so everyone in both cards, both both teams full decks. Everyone's killing it. Prelim, everything on. Yeah, that'd be a heaps better. Fucking game. great game. Heaps better game. Way better. And that was still a, that was a great was, game yeah. for thirty minutes. Yeah. And then it just got boring. Canberra 31, Dolphins 30. Now, um, <laughs> it's been admitted by the NRL earlier today that the, the, the Dolphins were actually hard done by uh, after the touch. You missed a, a Hudson Young knock on in Golden Point, no less. That's a, that's a tough what? one to take. So, if, so first half of Golden Point, um, Hudson Young knocked the ball on. And they caught it a six again. Yep, yeah, and... The touch judge didn't pick up on so it. So there's a little tip on from Sorry, Joe. I think I it was Jack the- Whiten. And they the guy went to go make a tackle, but Hudson Young knocked it into the defender. I remember seeing this live too, and then they all come up, and then they end up kicking the field goal just after it. Right. Yeah. Right. That ain't set. Ooh. That's tough, that eh? fucking yeah. hurts. And it would have been one of the fucking great comebacks again too. Oh, mate. You'd be thinking if you're Wayne, you're like, can we start the fucking game good? Yeah. How about we don't but how nervous would you be if you're up? sticky after the week you've had too? Yes. Mate, Jack Whiten. Doug. Nothing but respect for him. Doug. Like everyone hey. was sort of trying to doubt Jack White. And I don't think you know who you're talking about. That kid's all about that shit. You know what's frustrating Loves it for week me? in, week out. He's that dog. It's mm. He's a dog, but like me and Luke, you were talking about it, and this is what this is what comes up. So now there's a lot of chat around the transfer window and shit like this, right? About, oh, uh, yeah, is it fair or whatever? Mm. You, here's a few examples, right? How many- Give how me many, some because I'm fucking- How many- look, Here's two examples, right? Broncos- Two players are going to go to the Dolphins next year, Flegler and Herbie yeah. Farnworth. Did anyone talk? That was like, what, two months ago now? Three months ago? Just before the season yeah. started or maybe round one or two? Yeah, it, was, yeah. Yeah, it was early season. Why is no one talking about a transfer portal then? Why? Because the Broncos, although they like him, all yeah. right, we want to keep Carrigan, Payne Haas and all that. We're happy to lose him. This only comes up when teams mm. or players leave that club's don't want to leave. And this is a tough one because Jack Whiten has served this team well. Yeah. He's a Canberra through and through guy and they were close to win the competition a couple of years ago. But at the end of the day, he's got his reasons and you've got to support him. And to to bring up that the whole transfer window needs to be changed just because of one guy, like it, d- they, it just doesn't who, make sense Who said at all. that? Who was saying well, that? Well, I, th- I think, you know, Ricky alluded to it because it's been emotional for him. And it's just like, it's everything because it like statement. it didn't work yeah. out your way. Mm. It's a bit sooky, isn't it? Well, you know I mean, like, and it's, but it's all relative. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand. Like, just every team goes through it. Yeah. It's just whether or not how big it's a star, a, how big a star, and does it fit the narrative of like, you know, they don't care about the Broncos. They want Broncos to lose every player. Mm. It's never going to be a big deal. And if the Broncos kick up the stick, no one would care, but it's Ricky Stewart and you lost Jack White. You know, yeah. They're going to make a big deal of it. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. It happens every year. Well, would happen, and to they're th- never going to change it. Yeah, yeah, and it would have happened for the Storm or, or whatever if they lost months, but they didn't lose months because you, when you don't want to lose your best players, you don't want to lose your stars. Yeah, um, I do feel a little bit for Rick, uh, and he got real emotional at his press. Yes, as well. I know. Mate, I feel for Ricky. Yeah. I love Ricky. Yeah, I love Ricky. Yeah, and it's just like you lost because him and Jack are pretty tight. Yeah, you can tell it meant a lot to him. He wears yeah. his heart on his sleeve. You I love Ricky Stewart, for man. that. Yeah, a good relationship. But I mean, like these think tanks at the the NRL have, you know what I mean? They're all sitting around and they're like, should we move this? I think uh, it's media driven. No, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just saying like, so when everyone sits around and, and, and goes through it, this, um, that little bracket that you're talking about, everyone's yeah. just like, that's fucking stupid. You were talking about one guy out of a thousand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you one guy and this is what- How many people and, change and teams yeah, every and year? And it's all media based and it's just all, you know, do you fit that narrative and all that shit? So it's like, no, fucking done. You wouldn't even get to that, to the, get to that point mm. when you're talking about changing it because it's not really affecting anyone. Yeah. Anything else on that one? Um, fuck the Dolphins have just fucking got some fucking dog in them. God. Like, yeah, Wayne will be disappointed that they got got in that position again. And 
even though the Raiders were rolling through them, I was always like, there's a part of me just because it's yeah, you know, um, what was it called? Uh, me- uh, memory recency or whatever it's whatever they call it. Like just because they've done it the week yeah. before, they it's almost look like they're nervous straight away, even getting to to that bigger yeah. lead. You know, when when you talk about culture and everything like that, just say in the DNA of a club, you talk about these clubs like the Bulldogs and South, and they've got that. What's happening now and what they're doing, the DNA of the Dolphins, this is going to be fucking through 20, 30, 40 years yeah, of what they're the playing. We're seeing what, what, the what they'll be talking about in 30 years, yeah. which will be quite interesting. You know what I mean? Like we'll be like fucking 80 years old and watching the Dolphins if they win a if they win a premiership or something like that. And it's like, you know, the DNA of the club is just fucking hard work and not giving up and all this sort of shit. What they're setting right now is so important for the future. It's fucking unreal. But that's what Jesse Bromwich said about like why he went down there. He goes like – the big decision of going there is when he went to Melbourne, they always talk about the OGs, the yeah. ones that did come before them, the ones that set them up, won those comps early and then carried the tradition on. He goes, that's a big reason why he wanted to go to the Dolphins was to be a part of that. And man, like those guys are setting the tone. They've got some, you know, it's a really bright future. Again, you know, it sucks. They missed out on, on getting Jack White because I thought he would have been yeah. really good for him up there next year. But um Dolphins. Yeah. But it's just so, it's just great what they're doing. We're it's just, good we're for rugby league. We're witnessing doing. history, but like I always look at that. I always look at the game. Like I'm yeah. like these guys are a bu- they're part of history. It's like, good for rugby 20, league. In 20 years, like we're going to be sitting back if they they win a premiership in the next even five to ten. Yeah, you're like that's what they're set. You know, like they're they're setting the the history now. Mm. Manly went down to the Gold Coast, uh, 26 points to 10 at Brookie. Uh, tough viewing this one, mate. No, not really. I caught, that's why I caught it last week. <laughs> no, respectfully, you, you, you did oh, see the Dang, Tigers, not like you? a Tigers supporter like you. Yeah. Fuck. I'm not a one-eyed Tigers fan like you, <laughs> DJ Tigers. Just one I caught eye. it. Remember last, what was my biggest takeaway from last week? Manly ain't Manly it. Manly ain't it. Manly ain't it. Mm. And this is, I've seen this coming in the Tigers game. And uh, yeah, obviously, to, Tommy missing is big, but very one-dimensional. You know, they get stuck throwing the ball to Ola Quartz to a fair bit. Coming up with him, uh, trying to come up with the big mm. play, um, but you know, credit to Titans too. They come off a fucking humili- humiliating loss, the worst um, yeah, comeback, comeback in, in history, in NRL history, history, and they're always going to pump up. That will be a part. So that'll be what we we're just talking about. The Dol- they'll be part of the Dolphins' history. Yes, for the rest of they're their They're part life. of NRL history. Yes, but the Dolphins will be Until like, remember that game? It'll be a yeah. hundred years. Remember yeah. that game? We come back from twenty six nil against the Titans. We'll be dead. Remember the Titans. About it. Those remember who the dug Titans. the well. Remember the Titans. It'll be fucking written. In, it'll be written. Remember the Titans. Yeah, sort nice. of seen this I'm coming. I'm singing into this koala. Ooh, yeah, straighten up. Gee, she's comfy. Jeez. Um, yeah, but like this is sort of what I expected. I tipped the Titans. You did. I tipped them head to head. Tipped them with the start. So hopefully the punter's got on with our friends at the tab. Some good gem. OG, OG, send it coming as well. But um, yeah, I'm just not sold on Manly. Mm. That's why I've got them in that tier. They're, I think this is who they are. Yeah. I think they're capable of beating a fucking Broncos, a fucking, you know, a Parramatta, a South, like these sorts of teams that are going to be thereabouts, even a Roosters, but also mm. tossing up a performance like that where they're never really in it. They're lucky. 26 10 is flattering for me. Yeah, they just. I think Titans them. won pretty Titans much every, all the main battles. Throughout the whole game, wow! Yeah, it was disappointing. I watched that. I mean, I'm, and they were banged expect, up. The Titans. I expected the Titans to win. We said it last week. Mm. We're like, they got to still. They still got a good side. Yeah. Like, no turbo there. That young kid Weeks, he he's all right. He's all right, but he's, he's not the problem. He, he's not. He's not the problem. But mm. like, you got to put him at center, mm. and you got to put that. Um, what's the name back there? Garrick. Garrick. Put Gaz put back him. There. Like, he's been playing there all last year, and they, I don't know they missed. Tommy, but like fuck, he does a job. Like yeah. Weeks is not. Like, why wouldn't you? I'd put Weeks he looked in, good in the center. Yeah, yeah, fuck, you're playing against different different cattle there. Yeah. You know, you're playing against trials and all that sort of shit. Like everyone's fucking tried and tested, had eight games of footy, and then they're all coming at you. They're sticking these fucking bombs up in the air. I'm just like, fuck, someone's gonna jump over his head soon. Mm. He yeah. just looked rattled. He put a couple. He didn't down. offer anything out the back or anything like that. Where Garrick, at least he's played. Fucking 15 games there And he yeah. knows what's going on He's got good combinations With DCE And all that kind of stuff And it takes Garrick Out of the game mm. He never got the ball No He needs at least 15 touches a game He's yeah, a good player They're something A little bit in that back five And not even away from Turbo They're just like Trying to find their combination Yeah They've got like Three or four wingers That are potentially playing yep. Center and wing Yeah I agree so, They look all over the shop And their forwards It's just You know They're just Getting the ball get, 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 Getting the ball And they're just trying To get it to um, Olaquatu Once Yeah Once Brimo went down I thought all right, this Game on Mainly mainly a chancey But even then like Yeah it was close for a while Because they bought on What's the name Fucking um, Jaden Campbell 
He's the best he replacement in the fucking, world. It was the perfect opportunity. Yeah. I was like, who are they going to bring? I was like, oh, he's on the Jaden Campbell's on the bench. Miss anything. Jaden Campbell should be. He's he's got to be a starter elsewhere. He's but in saying that, him. he's still like defensively, and and he's still light, and he gets thrown around a little bit. He's got footy in him. He but sort yeah, of exactly. suits that fourteen role for him. Eh? He'll play now consistently yeah. for another couple of weeks, though. Yeah. He's that X factor that a lot of teams. Would yeah, offer. well, what are you going to do? Like, if someone offers him a shitload of money and Brumo's still on contract, and you know Brumo's not, you know, best ability is available. He's not always available every yeah. week, week in, week out. He's yeah. very, in- he's been injured. He's that war here, right? And I love, yeah, Brimson. I love Alejandro. Alejandro, and like he's he's the heart and soul of that team. They love him. Yep. But um, they're going to come to like a crossroads in the next in a year or two. I reckon someone's going to go. Here's six, seven hundred, kid. What are you going to do? You're going to stay here, be a backup. Or you want to be the you want to be fullback. You want to be an NRL fullback week in week out. Yeah. Someone like the Tigers might even throw shit at him. Like who that. else was uh, Who else was good in that game that I liked? Um, Do you go to the Tigers for seven hundred or you stay at the Titans for three fifty? We found our fullback, mate. <laughs> Lira. <laughs> <laughs> Rupia. <laughs> oh. Yeah, your fullback goes all right. He's good. Yeah, he does go good. Let's go talk, on, DJ Tiger Let's Town. talk about this game. Wait, yes. I, I, well, I said to Mace. This is go on because you weren't supposed to come in today because we had Nico on that in. We're gonna we're gonna do the potty with them. But I went. You know what? You deserve this. Get, run us through the shine. game. This is this is your shine. You deserve this. All right. So the last time the West Tigers won a game before this was in August last year, and I was in Vietnam trying to fucking get a VPN free trial so that way I could watch us beat the Bronx. That's how fucking long ago it was. I was sitting in Saigon, and the missus goes, "Why are you watching it? They're fucking useless." Fast forward to. Late April 2023. Wagga Wagga. Bathurst. Oh, Bathurst. Who was at Wagga wow. Wagga? Someone. Uh, Canberra. Yeah, Canberra. Canberra. Yeah. Wet and wild up against, the, uh, up against the Premiers. And holy fuck, I'm proud of my footy team. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, mate. Come on. I, I was, I Get was, emotional I, I, if you want. I was close. I was close. You know, look, I'm, I mean, look, you blokes can probably attest to it more than I can in the sense of when you've been down in the dumps and the doldrums and you've been having a you know, a real, real rough trot. It's like, it's not over till it's over. It's nothing better. And like, when when Brooksy kicked that ball dead, which was was quite smart because Edwards had to go and fish it back. Seconds. And then Edwards, and then Cleary put up the kick. I'm going, oh, yeah, well, where's we Crichton? He's yeah, going to catch yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah everything yeah. was just, I was like, fuck, yeah. I just... Yeah. That's right. Anyway, ball went out and, and that was it. Look, I... I'm just looking at the group chat too, like waiting for your message yeah. to come in too, but Mace got in and... Yeah, he got in. Congratulations, dude. Congratulations. I, I thought I'd just right, I'm quiet. more happy for you than the yeah, Tigers he, he players. He said that. He did no. say that <laughs> No, um, I, I, I... Abby Coruscant, like, I, I, I still can't believe that he plays in a West Tigers jersey. He does. We don't deserve him. He's that good. Um, yeah. yeah, he's a brilliant leader. He leads by example. Uh, he works so hard, and and and, and ultimately, you know, Penrith, it rubs off on everyone. Pen- Penrith missed him. Um, mm. You know, I I thought our backs were solid during Bull up second game of first grade. Yeah, and he's didn't, he's didn't looking nice, isn't he? And, you, I think you might have one there. Yeah, man. And then through that pass for uh, for Nofo's try, so. Mate, just a lot. And he's another one. Noffa's got to be playing consistently. His yardage carries are just fucking, especially in those conditions mm. as well. Sorry to cut you off, mate. You're but right. You, when you, you need guys like that in those yeah. conditions, and he and he he's essentially he's another Toto if you get if you get it right. Mm. He's got the odd stupid offload error in him sometimes, mm. which is frustrating. He as does a have a shitload of offloads. Mm. You know what I mean? If you're going to try and offload all the time, you're going to have an uh, yes uh, because he tries to. Like it's great for wingers to do that. Yes, but you got to get it right. It, uh, yeah, but he usually gets it right. Mm. Like he was leading the offloads last year, mm. right? Talk yeah, about round fucking twenty. Yeah, like yeah he he's can up offload. There. You know what I mean? So that could add another dimension to their game because they're very one-dimensional. Yeah, um, I'm just very thankful, uh, very proud of our forward pack. David Clemmer, two hundred and twelve meters. You know, massive, massive stint. What about his fella. ball? He's fucking yeah. when his oh, tape. Yeah, with the tape. Oh. When his tape was, I knew that as soon as about oh. three minutes before. I said, "Take your tape off." Yeah, because the play of the ball. Too you yeah, but it was like hanging down. Like yep. You got to take it off because the fucking when you're in the play the ball and stuff yep. like if you're one arm carry, it got caught. Did you see it? it got caught yeah. on the no, on the I missed bit. that one. So I was in a fucking crucial part. Oh, yeah. So he's like they were in go. attacking mode. It was like four minutes to go or some shit. Yeah. He's playing the ball. It's pretty much game over. If they camp down there for another set or something like yeah. that, it's game over. They don't yeah. even get another chance to get up there. Yeah. He's got up and played the ball. As I said, like it's on the tape, but there's a bit, there's a big long bit hanging off. He's played the ball, it's got caught and caught onto the sticky bit and just fucking fumbled it. I was like, oh, fuck, it's happening. Yeah. Oh, it's happening. Yeah. I said, this is it. They're going to get a chance to go up there or they're going to have two cracks at it at least because of that one fucking play. I was like, oh, my God, makes me sick. Mm. Um, 
Brooksy. Shout, shout out to Brooksy. Yeah. Two forty twenties. He's tackling like Victor Radley out there. Yeah, he was. Well, his technique is always good. And could, I'll, I'll say this. Brooksy's technique is normally pretty play. good. He can play. He can hit. Sometimes he makes weak decisions, but it's also not always his fault because mm. you, when you're consistently under the pump and having to bite in like he, the awful one against Oluquatu, yeah. but if you run at Brooksy one on one, he'll lick ya. Yeah, he got fucking um, Madison last year. Yeah, and he got a uh, uh, who for the uh, Katoa. Alyssa Katoa the yeah. saw him a couple of weeks ago. If you run at him straight no, up, he's the, good. Like that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that's why I don't. I get disappointed when he does when he does when he takes. That's a few why plays I feel off. sorry for him sometimes he because I'm like. Man. Is it is it Brooks or is it just has like eight years of fucking ten years of this tiger yeah. shit where he just goes every now and again can you like go fuck I feel sorry for him to just go oh, I've just had the fucking yeah I've had a playoff here when you can't afford to have a playoff no, in that team not in that position either yeah. playoff there it's a try yeah so anyway anyway sorry, good work Tigers no, you're all right and to his credit. Um, he didn't have an off play. Happy for the call. No, he didn't. He was no, he was he solid. Was. I was waiting for him. I was waiting, especially at the end there. I was waiting for the sort of Clemmer. I must have missed that Clemmer one. Yeah. But I was waiting for that sort of moment where he's like the back end of the Manly game when he didn't ice it and he's been doing that for the last couple of weeks and he was solid all like the way bad through. Ends, the, the awareness the set. Yeah. to kick that ball dead mm, and make smart. Edwards go and, go and fish it out. That was An that extra was a good, five or ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, the exactly most disappointing right. thing with Brooks is like everyone knows he's got like new, he's got origin talent. Mm. Like he's been playing for fucking like what nearly ten years now. He's got it Dally M, he's got Dally M five eight of the year. Mm. He's got all these accolades, so he can play. That's what's probably the more disappointing. If you were a fan of the Tigers and you're coaching him, you're like, fuck, dude, you can do it. The most disappointing thing is like if he oh, he's 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 very capable going to a new team next year because he will. There's no way the Tigers resign him, and They've I bet he kills it. Go. Oh, and mate, if he goes in the right situation, he's capable of playing really well. Mm. But I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Mm. The best thing for Luke Brooks is to fucking leave. It's too much trauma there. Yeah, yeah trauma. We'll too much That's trauma. That's trauma. Uh, happy for the coaching staff. Sheenzy, um, Benji, Rob, yeah. Fernsey. It's good that you take the licks as well. Mm. You know, like you think, am I, doing, am I doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? It's just like, now they look, at least you got to win against yeah. Penrith. At it's a, it's a home game for Penrith. But like... If you don't take confidence out of that and you can go on a little bit of a run, I'm not sure what, what will. You know, you beat the Premiers. Dragons yeah, give this a fuck. Week? I don't care. Dragons this week yeah. are magic. I don't care what you know what I mean? Like you didn't beat you just didn't beat fucking a low a low mm -hmm. team. Like you just beat the Panthers. And yeah, they it. they're expected to win. They go into every game expecting to win. I and, don't give a shit. And there's a bit in it too because of the Ivan situation. Yeah. Right? So it's not like Penrith were gonna take them easy because they're like bottom of the ladder. Mm. They're like, Penrith wanted to win that game. Like, There's always yeah, been a bit never, of They were never going into a game like that, especially the Tigers, especially like Ivan. He would have had those guys prepped to the best and it's like they still didn't get away with it. So they might go on a bit of a run. I'm not sure. Like they got, you, got the, you got the Dragons this week, you know, like so that should be a good segue into the next game. Yeah, we'll see. Um, anything else on Penrith? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, we're good. Alrighty, uh, Warriors went down to the Chooks 14-0. As in Penrith will be sweet, bounce back, as, okay. you know. Awful performance. Oh, not mm. even awful. Tigers usually deserved it. I don't want to play down what the Tigers did. Nothing to worry about with Penrith. They didn't play the conditions well. Ownership nah. of it, whatever. Move on. That'll be sweet. Go the fucking Tigers. <laughs> All right, 14-0. <laughs> Chooks over the Warriors. So pretty concerning that the that the Waz didn't get on the board uh, in this one. But mm. is it more to do with the Chooks defence or the Warriors? Yeah, Chooks defence. Nah, Chooks defence. Okay. Yeah, for sure. They've come off a couple of... They're a bit like the Knights where this is 40... Yeah, even though it's 14-0 and they didn't score, it's a bit, they're, they're a bit like the, the Knights in a sense where a couple of results haven't gone their way in the last couple of weeks, but mm. shitload of effort. But still, awful conditions. Fucking hell. Yeah, it looked awful. That's, that's the worst I think I've seen over here in the NRL. Um, but physically, I just think um, Roosters were just up for the battle a uh, couple of you know again a couple of rough little calls but um, I think this is just who the Roosters are I think they're the better team and it was you know again it's not it's not the prettiest sort of win from the Roosters mm. but it's, it shows signs of a good team you go over play New Zealand in those conditions you find a way they're tough for yeah. both teams and um, just to hold a team like the Warriors to nil yeah. over there like the Roosters are Look at that fucking butcher boys, man. They made fucking. I'm just looking at their stats. See, I think NRL Rose put him up. 
53 tackles, Egan Butcher. 57 to Nat. No Holy misses. shit. No misses. That's good. Plain that edge. That is ridiculous. That's really good plain edge. Both of them zero misses? Yes. Fuck. You know, like Matt Lodge, no Insane. miss. The no, conditions Lodge. help too, Mace. You know yeah, how much know, how yeah. easier it but is like to... Still, still, you're still making yeah. it... When you're getting over like yeah. 30 and you're still... <laughs> Those are great stats. And Victor Radley, 43, one miss. So the one missed tackle in a whole back row. Yeah. They played... They all played 80. Like, they, it was very efficient. You know what I mean? So... I mean, it's, they're always hard to beat. The Roosters can wind their sleeves up. They can play any sort of any anywhere. Yes. They, you want to play flamboyant? We've got that. This you want to play tough? The new we'll lineup. Play tough. The new lineup is, yeah. is perfect for it. You know, Whereas, Lodgy playing against his old side. Like, he would have been prepped for that. Like, I mean, yeah, I just I think. But, I mean, the Warriors are. You're always going to have a crack there. Like, they, as I said, like, we said it before. They've got big outs. You, you, Jazz Tavanga. Yeah, like, Charles they're Nicole lucky Boxster. it was 14 nil, yeah. right? I don't know. I'm not really. I'm, the Warriors wouldn't be going. Fuck, we should have won that. No, Maybe. not at all. Maybe. Not a, not, you know? No, not, no, no, not at all. Not yeah. at all. But um, there's some. There's still some great signs from them. I think the Roosters are there going. Yeah, we're in good stead now. We're yeah. on twelve points, and they haven't had a good start to the year, and they're coming. They haven't been second. great, have they? But they're still, and they're still yeah. coming equal second, so they're just going to yeah. chug along, man. Beautiful. All right, let's get to the last game. No worries, dogs. 18-16 mm. over the Dragons down at Win. Very gutsy giving you injuries, mate. But Jake over real life, fuck, he was good. Jesus, fuck, he was electric. He was outstanding. But what about Braden Burns? Fucking hell, Braden Burns did a grade. I think I think it's a grade one or grade two MCL in the first hit up, and he still did that. Can still I still um, played that? Yeah, go. Can I? Yeah, obviously, Mace, you're close to yeah. it as well. But I was watching that game, right? And this is for any young player or even NRL players that watch our content. Go back and watch what Braden Burns did off the back of the information that Mace yeah. gives you because you can't... Can't coach that shit. You can't coach that. You've got to have it within you. And so that first try to the Dragons, he chases his ass off, puts um, Fainga in the corner. Yeah. Zach Lomax misses, misses the kick. That's the difference. Yeah. That was effort play. So when when that there was uh, you know when he got the uh, got the bounce off the off the drop ball or whatever off the bad offload, he there was six bulldogs chasing yes, him in the pitch chasing, up, chasing Zach pitch Lomax, yep. and then he got that he threw that beautiful ball. Was fucking, yep. He was at boys people. He was at fucking full tilt hundred and then bang through that perfect ball pass. on the chest. Usually we might go behind. That was great. It was great play. But our boys did not give up chasing him in the corner. Like he has a grade one grade. Like he was jacked up properly at halftime. Yeah. Um, but his efforts, but they didn't set that try up, the first Avrilo yep. try. Yeah, the little bang, bang, step, a oh, little fucking dummy, this, this, this. You can't coach that shit. And then the second one, the second half, we fucking left the right pass going flat out. just and Under to, pressure. To, under pressure to try and beat the other winger. The wingers go for intercepts, you know what yeah. I mean? They want to run to the house. Bang. Avs, again, I was like, fucking hell. But that's, that was brilliance in the side. So firstly, that right edge. Burns, unbelievable character. Exactly what you need when you're in the yeah. position that you're in at the moment yeah. with the Bulldogs yeah. have a couple of losses in a row, Mace. Those performances and those efforts yeah. can really bring a team back. Avarillo, yeah. mm. he could be special. He can play, man. He's just been, you know, like he started the He's been banged bit. up two weeks yeah. ago against the Parramatta yeah. as well. So he's he's tough, man. He's fast. We're not sure what sort of play. Plays center, plays fullback, plays 5'8". He just plays anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm glad that he just got the... He's been doing some great sprint training with our with our man Ruben. Fuck, it's you know, paying Rubes. off. Yeah, the Rubes. Rubes. Shout Rubes. out to Rubes. Shout out to Ruben. He loves the show. Um, Rubes, we're about to do our NFL draft tonight too. Rubes is pumped for that. He fucking NFL, loves it. NFL dynasty. <laughs> he loves Ruben. But I'm more talking about the grit. Like yeah. far out. Like we're, we're under the pump. There's no excuses. Of course we've got players there. Yeah. Play, other clubs have got players. It's next man up mentality. Yeah. It's a culture that we're trying to build. They just fucking stood up. They've got their jersey on. Young kid Carl comes into the fucking fray. Um, young, kid, young kid Carl comes in, making his debut, gets a win. Very emotional kid, mm. you know what I mean? Like Great means scenes. a lot. Means a lot to him, you know what I mean? And he felt protective. Feels like one of the boys, you know what I mean? They went, they went to war with St George. St George are big physical, physical, fuckers, man. They still bring physical. it, man. Blake Lowry, Bird, Jack Bird's a fucking dog. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Jack DeBellin's about that. You know what I mean? They love it. Molo's a big dude. Their backs are big. They're physical, and we we just don't fucking stop. Mm. We don't stop. We keep turning up and we keep turning up. Like they had fucking, they had a fair few chances to, to get some tries yeah. and we yeah. just kept turning them away, getting out of yardage and just being. And it would just, have been frustrating watching as a Dragon supporter, but. Yeah, it would have been. Saying that, the in. Bulldogs, you know, you kept turning up. Six or seven starters out. Yeah. No excuse. Fucking next man up. You got that jersey with this is what we expect from you. And that's, that's it. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, you could say that we had like three guys come from reserve grade on the bench, plus Carl, who's a rookie, on the yeah. bench. You know what I mean? Like, he looks so. Play, Mace. No, he looks the player. Yeah, I can see why. Good. Yeah, everyone's been messaging us, you know, messaging Levels Network and that, asking about him. Um, obviously, you know, I, I heard a lot about him, but the mm. biggest thing I took away from watching it is that. He looks the part. Yeah, he, he doesn't look out of place. No, he doesn't. He's not like one of these kids that you rush up and you're like, fuck, he looks off the pace. It's like, yeah. no, nah, he's he's about it, mate. And I had a really good chat with him. It was a great moment there. Um, you know, they obviously make a big deal about young kids in their first grade debut now. Yeah. Um, I was talking Especially to, I was talking, to, I was talking to Ogre like before. I said, remember our debut? Like, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> no one give the fuck. You just play. Were you not a big deal? You would have no, been a big no, deal no. when no, you No, it wasn't, nah. mate. They just, clubs weren't like that. Like, just, but Sonny, Sonny was. Yeah, but Sonny was playing round one. Like, yeah. I didn't come in round one. Yeah, okay. And neither did, neither did Carl. Like, Carl's come in round 10. Yeah. They, they're yeah. just a different era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They just yeah. say, you know, they got the writing on the thing and like, you know, like yeah, yeah. first grade debut. They yeah, that's all cool. I like that But it's shit. cool. I, like, I, I like that. Like, yeah, we just didn't it. have it. Like, yeah. I'm just like, it just wasn't, and it, and it is what it is. I'm not going to sit there going, fuck, I wish I had this. Like, mm. no, I don't give a fuck. Mm. And then they had, I think, 15 family members. Yep. Come you know, watch the game. They come watch the game, awesome. and there was like you know Carl you know, Oluwapu, like it was good. But after the game was special, right? Mm. They did the haka and everything like that, yeah. and it was just huge. Him seeing, or watching the guys like, you know, like sing the song and just the energy in there, and he was just like, he, it was it was very special moments for the young, young kid. You know, like everyone would have wished for like a debut like that. Mm. Um, Nothing to get a win. Did you get a win on your debut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, like, times to time to cha- times Did to change. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask. Times to change. Know. People just, it just wasn't a big deal. It was just like part of, it was just, just the way it is. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but I remember talking to him after the hucker. I said, hey, kid, you know, how you feel? He's, he's, you know, like, he's nearly teary eyed. And she said, see this shit? It's over with now. Yeah. I said, the great players, week in, week out. Now you're a first grade. I said, grade. now you're a first grade. This is all done. Great work. Your family's down here. The hucker, all that sort of shit. I said, five days we're playing at Suncorp. Yeah. I said, the great players, you don't stay up here too too long. Yep. Ride the highs. Yep. You don't go go. You don't you don't stay down too long. Get straight back to the middle. Do review all that sort of shit. I said, but just accept, like love it, love it that you win. You yeah, know enjoy what I mean? Like, tonight. Just fucking enjoy tonight. Love it. I said, but when Put you come away. back to reality, you come back in the middle. Yep. You do straight back, and you would we're, we're game planning for 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 the Raiders. Yeah. I said, and that's in life. You know what I mean? Have everything. Have the right people. Always give you advice about stuff. You know yep. what I mean? So that's great advice. And he's very receptive. I wouldn't talk. Just say for a young kid, if they're not receptive, and they, if I think you don't give that sort of, I don't give a fuck, not. mate. Yeah. I don't care. I'm, you know what I'm like. I'm like, I won't take. I won't even go out of my way to do that. But I know that he's like, he's he he's a special kid. You know what I mean? I said that's what the great ones do. The JTs and the Joeys, week in week out. Yeah. From fucking whenever they landed in first grade, fucking done now. So this would be great. Everyone makes it. Everyone gets. You only get one NRL debut. This yep. is it. You're done. Yeah. So now it's just start fucking ticking it off. Onto ticking it next. off. On to the next. On to the next one. I said, you have that mentality. I said, you'd be fucking great. On to the next. And the next is Magic Round. See you up there. Ooh. We'll be filming from the Caxton. Let's come say go. hi. Come get around us for a beer. And uh, come see if you see us around the stadium on Friday night when the dogs knock off the Raiders. Yes.